Crap. Um, can you uh, somebody make a post on my joint? Just put it on the feed. Coachproofpod.com. Well, you can use my other phone. Here, use this phone. It goes to the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and in the stories. All right, let's do this. Oh, we're on now. We're live. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, we're here. Um, welcome to Free Smoke. We are about to give you the free game that you need as an entrepreneur. Now's the time you really, really need to share this out with five to ten people. If you have a business partner, you definitely need to share this out. A friend or family member, somebody that you love, you really need to share this out because we have some incredible entrepreneurs on today. Uh, but we got a song. We got a song. Are you are you ready, J Star? Let's get it. What we got? Talk to me. Look, I ain't got time for this small talk. Your big plans coming up short. I call it how I see it. Don't get mad at me. In a room full of witnesses, where I'd rather be. You know they gonna hate. We just let them be. When you got this social proof, they can't deny receipts. Why talk when your actions speak? They want smoke, we get that for free. Okay, we are here. For, it was dope. You like it? I saw what you did there. I saw that. All right, so are we gonna talk about it this week too, J Star? All right, do we have it? Do we have the other mic or no? All right, so he played me the song, and I was like, "It's good, but I think you could do better." But, <laughs> but, but we took like a little poll last week, and people thought it was dope. So, man, I got the I got the bars coming though. So I'm working on another one already. Another one? Yeah. For All right, sure. bet for sure. All right, look, man. How about we just do a new one every week? <laughs> Damn. The pressure oh, real. Album. How's that pressure? Social you got, proof album. That's yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I gotta do a show every week. I gotta come up with content every week. But you want you people come to, up, you right. want people when they come on to sing it. You feel what I'm saying? You want to be like, yo, they want I mean, I'm saying, but I'm saying until we find that one. Oh, you we about to have that one. I'm, if it's too much for you, just Listen, let me know. Bro, let, let, if you can't write three <laughs> bars every week, let me know. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, you tell I'm with me. It. Same beat or what? How you want to so, do it? Same beat. Because uh, this year, this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> All right, man. Let's jump into this conversation. Uh, I'm really, really excited about it. There are some mistakes that entrepreneurs continue to make. And uh, we actually have a new entrepreneur here today that i'm so glad you're gonna be in this conversation i'm happy too oh my god 20 years old right yes oh goodness gracious we are going to um we're gonna like warn you this whole episode okay and um there's there's a lot of pitfalls that you can make and i wish i was having this conversation that we're about to have um when i was 20 years old Mm mm-hmm so I was just doing stuff. You just go out and you just hustle, right? But yeah. um, we're going to come up with a bunch of reasons uh, or, or mistakes that people make. And number one, turn me up a little bit. Turn me up a little bit. Okay. Because I need to. Okay. Yeah, turn me up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, mistakes that entrepreneurs make. One, I would definitely say being overly influenced by mentors. Mm. And a lot of people don't really uh, understand that when I say being overly influenced by mentors can hurt you uh, because you think just because someone's successful that they know what's best for you. And that's not the case. And typically somebody became successful in a lane and you never know if that person became successful based on a window of time. For instance, there's a lot of people that became successful or became full-time entrepreneurs during a pandemic when the entire world is flooded with money. And you're listening to them on what to do to become successful, but they have no idea what it's like in a down season. So some people can, if you win, listen, man, I'm not about to ask, if I'm be honest, I'm not going to ask Robert Ori what it takes to win a championship. He's a good basketball player, right? He was on some phenomenal teams, though. You know what I mean? Now, so some people are in a win, taking nothing away from Robert, okay? You did a great job. But some people succeed in a window, but they have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to you. And your journey might be totally different than theirs. And I've had people almost talk me out of my dream because they think it didn't make sense to them. When I saw a clear vision and they never even attempted to do what I'm trying to do. So 
I just want you to be clear that even the stuff that we're going to talk to you about Zeta um, is important. Take it with a grain of salt. Okay, you take the good, take what makes sense to you and take what you think is going to be valuable and you make it your own formula. But the only way, the only way you are gonna understand what it takes to be successful is you go out in the streets, you fall down a bunch of times and you get back up. It's the only way you really learn about what you're doing because hopefully you're doing something that no one's ever done before and nobody can guide you on that. So one of the mistakes people make is being overly influenced by mentors. Number two, taxes. Mm. First off, I'm still navigating those waters to this day. Okay, I, 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 I didn't pay 2023 yet. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. Okay, listen, I listen. We ain't no judgment, right? This is we good. This is judge free zone. Hey, listen, man. Pay your taxes throughout the year, okay? Because it will hit you all at once, and you won't have it all at once. Just because you make a million dollars. In a year doesn't mean you have a million dollars at the end of the year. Just because you make a million dollars doesn't mean you have anything at the end of the year. And imagine making a million dollars and you spend a million dollars at the end of the day, Joe Biden still wants a portion of that. They still want their money because all the stuff that you thought was a write off, they're like, nope, can't write that off. Did you know taking people out to dinner is no longer the write off you thought it was. It has to be catered. Because if you do an event, catered, it's an expense. But if I go out and I just swipe my card and people are like, oh, don't worry about it, it's a write-off. That is not true. You need to understand taxes. Pay the government. Who are you giving flowers to? Oh, really? Oh, no, it ain't. Not for, nah, uh, my wife be watching this. Ain't nobody sent me no flowers. <laughs> Who sent those? <laughs> nope, I'm cool. <laughs> that ain't for me. Reese walked in with a bouquet of flowers talking about it's for you. No, it ain't. I don't, baby, I don't know who that, I don't know who that's from. So, pay, <laughs> pay your taxes. That is a big mistake because they're going to want all their money and it's going to kill you the next year when you don't have the money to invest. Number three, ooh, ideas from friends. I do want to... Uh, uh, share with you it's very important that you don't come up with good ideas around your friends because your good idea becomes y'all's idea and then after that night of y'all coming up with amazing ideas and you wake up in the morning and you want to move forward they feel away because you're moving forward on this idea and if you move forward them with them typically you'll find that they none of them can help you I used to come up with ideas me and my friends having a drink we come up with this great idea and for the next hour and a half, two hours, while we're playing spades and drinking and smoking hookah, we come up with this genius idea. And I'm like, all right, bet. You're going to be over the finances. You know a lot of people. You go to the club a lot. You're going to be over marketing. And I'm going to do this. And you're going to do that. And that night of drunken conversation, wake up in the morning, I'm still inspired and realize none of these clowns can help me. None of y'all are useful for this particular business. So if I have a good idea, around my friends, I keep it to myself until I can craft it and make it into something. And then I identify who can help me with this particular idea. Do not, you be sitting around with your friends talking about business ideas? No. Don't do it. It's a mistake, I'm telling you. And then they feel away like, yo, I wanna move forward. You're like, yo, that's my idea. I'm the one that told you to make the logo blue. Like what, that was your input and that was your business. All right, uh, coming up with ideas uh, with your friends. Number four, one of the mistakes is thinking that everything is working. Um, turn that up a little bit, J-Star, because I, I need him to understand this part. <sighs> thinking that everything is working. Because if we're looking at it from a um, an optimistic perspective, your business from an optimistic perspective, something is wrong and you'll be blind to it because you're too busy celebrating yourself about your accomplishments. Right now, I'm always looking for the holes. My mind is not everything's working, but I'm I'm always actively looking for the thing that's not working. 
that's how you improve a business, okay? You can have a season where everything is up and the algorithm is forever in your favor and all your friends are in love with your business and the sales are up and you realize that slowly the, the, the crack in the business is getting bigger but you don't notice it until your boat is full of water. You're like, where'd this come from? So I'm always looking to fix something. I need you to always be looking to fix something. Everything's not working, there's something broken in everybody's business. So you gotta actively be looking for that thing, okay? It's exciting when sales are coming in and everything is good, but I'm telling you, don't be blinded by that. Number five, being money hungry. Um, I think I am uh, extremely blessed because I don't think I'm like always chasing money and I found some people who no matter how much they have, it's never enough, ever. The things that you can do with like people who've built 20, $30 million businesses and they feel the need to go aggressively after a hundred million and they, they're losing their family in the process. That process, it just never stops. That hunger for more, it never stops. Imagine if you had $30 million, it'd be lit, right? Or you feel like it's not enough and you'll want more. And you'll see somebody else with 50 and you feel the pressure to go after the 50. So I, I, I think it's very, very important that we don't get too caught up in the number in the bank account. Now it's important, we wanna consider it to make sure we're running a healthy business, but don't get caught up in the chase or pursuit of it because you find yourself catching everything you wanted in life and you, feel, you find yourself accomplishing your dreams, but your dreams, when you get them, they don't feel like dreams, they feel like nightmares. And you feel like you're not uh, doing enough and you'll realize that every time you get to the top of a mountain, you're at the bottom of another one and you keep climbing. So take some time for yourself. Try to identify the, the things that really, really matter in life and not be so, uh, so money hungry. Last one, and this is a big one. This is gonna be a mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs make. Not showing love on the way up or when you arrive. So you've gotta build, you gotta build a community. I've always been big on this. You need a mentor, mentees, and colleagues. So the mentor, you're gonna learn from, you're gonna grow from that, those people. But you also have mentees where you teach the people that are looking up to you the things that you learn from the people that you're looking up to. So you have these mentors, these mentees that you've been teaching and uh, in, 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 uh, guiding through your particular process. And then you have these colleagues that are kind of on the same level and you guys are building together. Just make sure, especially the colleagues and the mentees that you are focused on building relationships with those people because those are the ones that are gonna surpass you and you'll need them on the way up. And a lot of the people that you find that get canceled in social media are because they haven't built a community of people on the way up. Or even when they get there, they start feeling like they somebody. And when the world starts to attack you, you want to humble yourself then, but then it's a little too late. So make sure you keep a good name on your journey to the top and when you get there. So those are my six mistakes that entrepreneurs make, but I am so uh, excited to talk through the other entre entrepreneurial mistakes that we are going to save a lot of people from today. So. Thank you so much, J-Star. Are you D DJ J-Star? Or what you, you want to be called? <laughs> just J-Star? Okay, just J-Star. All right, so I want to uh, introduce our guests for today. Uh, we got some people that have real receipts, running real businesses. And um, I'm really excited to call these people my friends. So we'll start on the left. Dion, what's up? What's up with your brother? Um, Dion Coopwood, for those who don't know, uh, founder and owner of Dominate the Decade Mentorship Group. And I teach entrepreneurs how to start, grow, and scale their business by way of leveraging credit. And I actually created a software that's making it easy for people to actually get real results in real time so that you can actually take that and go and do real things in life. So I'm glad to be here, brother. Love it. Love it. Um, give me one mistake entrepreneurs make that you can think of off the top of your head. Um, not hiring people at all in their business. Trying to be a one-man wrecking crew. Mm. Um, that was the one thing that I had to learn. I, I was struggling trying to figure out why I was running a business for a year after year after year and only making six figures. And it wasn't until I actually, I only hired two people and that took me to seven figures. And then when I hired like two to three more people that actually took me to eight figures. Mm. And I never knew that I needed 
people, I was one of those individuals like, if I don't do it, it's not going to get done right. And so I was hoarding responsibilities and I didn't realize I needed to give my responsibility the ability to go empower other people to actually do things that they were actually better than me at. Yeah. So like now I have a COO and I have a program director, I have community managers. And so these people make business easier for me. And so I didn't realize that until I, you know, I just kind of stagnated my own growth. And so I was my own enemy at, and so to speak. Wow, good stuff, man. Now, to my left, uh, we have a powerhouse dynamic businesswoman, Alexia Wright. What's happening? What's up, Shane? You good? I'm good. Man, you've been in the streets for a minute. How long have you been an entrepreneur? <laughs> um, since I was 17. Really? So I'm 27, so it's been about a, a decade. Sheesh. <laughs> when did you start making like money where you're like, oh, I'll be an entrepreneur forever? 20. About 20. 20. Yeah. Really? That's when I, that's when I quit Chick-fil-A at 20. You quit Chick Fil A to do what? Um, real estate. At twenty. At twenty. Damn. Sheesh. It's been that long. Receipts on my page. <laughs> <laughs> so you got your real estate license? No, no, no. I was real estate investing. Mm. At twenty. At twenty. Who yep. told you that? The mentor that I had at the time. Mm. I'd rather not say, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> they janky now. I'm not saying okay. nothing. All right. <laughs> all right, all right, okay. But no um, so I think the well, you want me to introduce? Oh yeah, yeah. Introduce yourself. Then give me one mistake. Uh, my name is Alexia Wright. I am known as the Airbnb Queen. Um, I have property management, housekeeping, you name it, party bus business. Um, I've been an entrepreneur, like I said, for about ten years now. So, I think the biggest mistake that entrepreneurs make in today's society is giving up too soon. And I think mm. you kind of hit the nail on the head, Chance, when you said that they are overly influenced by uh, social, people on social media. Um, I speak a lot about being consistent. I think consistency is key because if you give up in the middle, like you'll never get there. Yeah. So a lot of times entrepreneurs, especially new ones, when something is not working at that specific time, they're like, oh, I want to go do something else. Yeah. And then that doesn't work. And then, oh, I want to go do something else. And by that time, by the time you get to your fifth idea, you still broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, we got a problem there. So mm -hmm. I really think the biggest mistake that I see a lot of entrepreneurs making, because I do have, like, mentees and I do have students, and the biggest mistake they make is they'll give up on Airbnb. Mm -hmm. I'll be right at their fingertips and they'll still give up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, just keep going. Dang, now I you got to go, you, you got you to gotta go start over somewhere else. I definitely gave up. Yeah, so... I think we all have at some point, but at some point you got to stay consistent with something. Yeah, for sure. Social proof would not be here had you gave up in your first year. Yeah. If you're like, man, this podcast ain't making me no money. Like, I'm about to go sell airplanes. <laughs> airplanes ain't working. I'm about to go. Like, I'm about to go sell artwork. Like, you got to stay consistent with something. That's a fact. Yeah. That is a fact. Well said. Yeah. Um, we also have Young Zeta here. Um, so first off, I don't know how did, how did this happen. Um, I bought some books from you. You were at. Where was we at? Where? We were at a, we were actually at an event for Pinky Cole. Yes. We're at an event for Pinky Cole. Did I buy the books then? I bought the books. I bought you some, I gave you some money. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Tell the story. Tell the story <laughs> as you remember it. So I was at a Pinky Cole event and I ran into David Shands. <laughs> and um he he known about my book um and he came up to me and he was like I want to buy give me five Just give me five <laughs> <laughs> and I was like okay <laughs> um and then it, it went from there well you didn't have five on you I didn't okay. I did not have five so on I me gave her a hundred dollars and I said yes I want my books or I'm going to post that you're a scam. <laughs> <laughs> I, gave, I gave her like $100 and um, she she kept her word and she dropped them off. Um, tell us about the book. So a um, funny story. The book actually started off as uh, it, it started off as like a, a project for school mm -hmm. when I was 15. Oh, wow. Um, and. I remember there was like a list of words that we had to choose from. And one of the words on there was courage. Mm -hmm. And we had to write a story based off of the word that we chose. So I decided to use a story from my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I chose to use the story of how um, I no longer have my mom in my life. Mm 
Mm. And um, just my journey as... She's not, is she not around anymore at all, or is she just not in your life? She is... She's still alive. She's just not in my life. She's not around mm. anymore. Okay. Um, and I chose to use that story because it took a lot of courage to get out of that situation. Um, I had to speak up about some things that happened while I was in her care. And I was five at the time. Mm. So it, it was a lot like, um, it was just a very volatile situation. And had I not spoken up about that situation, um, I wouldn't be with my dad because he wouldn't have won the custody battle. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I came up with using that as my topic for school, I went to my dad and I told him about it and I read up like my, my draft. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad is a writer too. So I was like, oh, could you please read it? You know, just, just let me know what you think. And he got around to reading it and he was like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. You should turn it into a book. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm 15. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but he was like dead serious. Yeah. And I was like, okay, bet. I got you. And how long did it take you to write the book? It took me... Or from idea of, I know I'm going to write a book, to actually having it in our hands. So I started writing it when I was 15. And then there was the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, so that slowed down the process. I officially was done writing the actual meat of the book when I was 17. I had to write the rest of the manuscript. Um, that took probably a couple months. Mm -hmm. And it was officially published by the time I was 19. Good, good. We are super proud of you. How can people get it? How can people buy it? So it is available on Amazon, on Barnes and Nobles, and Books a Million. Good. Okay. Um, you you're here to learn entrepreneurship, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, we I about, am. We're about to help you out right now. Okay. I'm excited. All right. So um, let's let's get into this conversation. And also, this is the first. We oh, you want to give the rules? Yes. Oh, show the book. Okay. This is it's called My Perspective by Zeta Nicole Luby. Okay. Um, Nella, let's get this thing started. What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to Free Smoke Friday. I am your girl, Nella. And of course, you guys already know you in our house. So I got to give you the house rules. First and foremost, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that like button because you cannot be on this live and have not liked it or shared it with five friends. And when it's time, make sure that you get ready with your burning question. I don't care if you are beginning, budding, if you are a seasoned entrepreneur, you have that one question that is burning deep down inside of you and it will catapult your business. Get ready to have that question answered because at four o'clock, you'll be able to go live with everybody on the couch today. All right. But with that having been said, let's get to this free smoke. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Um, do me a favor. Uh, let's, let's, uh, pin that, that comment of socialproofhotline.com because you can click that and you can actually join this live with video today. So we're excited. Let's do this. All right. So I want to get into some, uh, personal shares and I'm gonna start with you, Alexia. Um, you've made mistakes since you were 20, right? As an entrepreneur. Definitely. What has been the most memorable mistake that you will never, ever repeat? Mm. That's a good question. Something I would never do again. It was a big mistake. It was like, yo, this was what? Um, you ever had one of the mistakes? You like, why was what was I thinking? Why was that? I will like at this time. So I did my first million dollars at twenty three, and I blew everything. So now because we like, say you blew everything, what do you mean? I, the same way you said you make a million, spend a million. <laughs> <laughs> what was you spending it on? I do not know, Shannon. <laughs> like, I cannot tell you. Okay, so, like, all right, this is why it's my biggest mistake. Because, like he said, if you don't have a team, you, you can't grow. Yeah. So now that I have a team, and I got to make sure other people eat. Mm -hmm. And I got to make sure my bills get paid, essentially, sure. because we can have our personal bills, but our business bills are completely different, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So once you get to a point where you have to take care of other people, you have to take care of other things besides your own, 
you got to start moving different with money. Yep. Of course, at 23, I wasn't like, oh, let me make sure I got 100000 put away or a quarter million put away. I wasn't in that mindset, yeah. respectfully. Like, I was 23. Get the, like, <laughs> like, I was 23, you know? So now. See the bag, buy the bag. Yeah. See the like, shoes, buy the shoes. <laughs> we got the money. So now I will honestly, I would really, um, I would do better with planning financially. And that's 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 transparent. So I would really do better. I think it really makes a big difference when it comes to growing and scaling your business. You cannot grow and scale without making sure that you know where your money is going. Mm -hmm. I spend now. I spend a lot of money on food. I spent a lot of money on food. It's ridiculous. It don't make sense. But now it's different from then. Then, like, I didn't, you know how sometimes you could be in the middle of making money, you moving around, you hustling, you grinding, mm -hmm. and you don't realize you really did this because you was working so hard until yeah. it's over. And by the time it was over, I'm like, dang, all my money gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, it's all gone. Thanks to God, I was able to do it the next year. Right. So when I did it again, it was, it was a little bit different. Like, my boyfriend and I, we made... We made investments at that point. So yeah. I didn't feel like my money my money went to waste. Yeah. So now if I don't make money in this area, I know I got five other things going on that'll make me money. I so it. I truly think that the biggest mistake I made personally was not planning financially because now I feel like sometimes I get mad, I'm like, dang, all these ideas I have now and the things I can do, I can execute now, I wasted a million dollars. Of course it's not wasted, but you get what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, now we're not making a million dollars and we don't know where it's at. Yeah, nobody's yeah. doing that now. For for sure. Nobody's doing that. Yeah, there's but some then, people doing that now. That's crazy. Now. If somebody's doing that, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I will never do that again. Yeah. I will never do that again in my life. So ever. how do how do we not do that? You know what I mean? Like there planning. are people that are making money fast. Yeah. Plan I really think it comes with planning financially. And you know what it is? Re um COVID came. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really had to wake up. Yeah. Right? And I'm very transparent with my COVID story because I was able to bounce back. Thanks yeah. to God, I was able to bounce back. But there were some people who did not make it out of that COVID storm as a Airbnb host, yeah. right? And that was my main source of income at the time. So, of course, it it hit a little it, it hit a little different, yeah. you know. Um, but at the time when COVID hit, I realized like, dang, it was I gotta I gotta figure out something else. Yeah. And at that moment, I knew in. I knew like w one one income is is way, mm. and I think I got this from Ryan Leisure. One income is way too close to being broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will, I will, I will never have one income again. But here's well, here's the the other side of that is, people think that not having one income means we need to have a bunch of income from a no. bunch of different mm -mm. places. Mm -mm. Nah. So I don't. I I think we need to have that conversation. I agree. Yep. I, I agree with that. So when I say not one, make it make sense. Mm. So I'm not going to be doing Airbnb, trying to run a podcast, making money, selling bottles of water, <laughs> selling hair, too much, selling eyelashes. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be all over the place. So let me give you an example. So for me, my multiple sources of income go together. Mm -hmm. I like hospitality. Yeah. I like serving people. That's where I came from. I came from Chick-fil-A. I worked at Chick-fil-A my whole entire teenage years until I got grown. Mm -hmm. So I worked at Chick-fil-A. I, I started at Chick-fil-A at 14. Oh, wow. So, yeah, all I housekeeping. I'm not all over the place. Everything mm -hmm. goes within hospitality. But imagine me just relying on my income from my Airbnbs, and that's it. I had mm -hmm. no other sources. No mm -hmm. interior design company, no housekeeping company, no property management company, nothing. Gotcha. That's mm -hmm. what I mean by not having one income. I want to ask. I want. I want to ask you too, um, Dion. How do we decide when to start building another stream? You know what I mean? Because mm. it's hard enough to yeah. build a stream. Yeah. yeah. Versus, like somebody might be getting in the Airbnb space and they get one unit, yeah. then a yeah. second unit. They're like, "Yo, Alexia said." I got to make my own soap. So now I'm focusing on <laughs> making my own <laughs> soap and my own lotion. <laughs> right? But yeah. uh, we, we need to break that down. Right? Yeah. So yeah. give me a perspective. I want to hear I, it. Uh, I think that it just comes with time, but I also think that yeah. you need to look at not only the marketplace, but look at what are the people in your environment that are following you? What are they asking for? So you can actually make a poll. You can put a poll on like Instagram and say, what is one thing that we need to do? Or like even if you're doing Airbnb, like what would you guys like to see more of? And they'll tell you. Okay. Like even with me being in financial literacy, being in that space, I can make a poll and say, hey, what is what is something that you guys want to see? One thing that made me create my software was people was like, look, I don't want to pay you. Is there any way that I can just use something by myself and just learn this? How can I learn this myself? And so I was like, dang, people really don't want to pay. 
And that's what got me out of the service based business. It got me into more of the just like she said, actually serving people and teaching people how to do it themselves. Yeah. And so you talking about people saying this is what I want. This is what I want. I said, oh, wait a minute. There's another stream. Mm -hmm. But not even really looking at it and saying there's another stream. But I looked at it as opportunity for me to create opportunities for other people. Right. And now I'm like, I can create this software. I can teach you how to use it. You can do your own thing, create like. Improve and enhance your own credit and then make some money doing it using the software, helping other people. Mm -hmm. And guess what it did? It brought me another stream of income. We talk about another seven figures yeah. just off of just what the people wanted. It wasn't it didn't have nothing to do with me being saying, well, I'm going to create what I want. No, you got to create what the people want you to create. That's a fact. And like she said, it's it's all in the same realm. Like I'm not out here driving trucks. Like I don't be on Instagram talk about financial literacy one day and then I'm at night I'm driving trucks or I'm, or I'm going to a job because I got to get seven streams of income. You can have seven streams in one business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I got I got multiple streams in one business. Like I'm not over here shucking and jiving and I'm all over the place. No, I, I'm good at what I do. Mm -hmm. Like I know that financial literacy was my calling, so I'm gonna stick with what I'm good at doing. You know, yeah. I'm not gonna get. I love Airbnb hosts. I got people. She's like, I'm not going to go do it. That ain't my thing. Yeah. I'm going to send her the people that want to do Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can work out some kind of partnership agreement where I get an affiliate every time and vice versa. But I ain't got to go do Airbnb. Mm -hmm. That's her thing. You see what I'm saying? Shans mm -hmm. does this. I ain't doing this. Like, I'm not going to start a podcast. Oh, you going to start, start a podcast, bro. I may start a podcast, <laughs> but I may not go to the extremes. But the podcast may be for me to just get financial literacy out there. Gotcha. See what yep. I'm saying? I'm going to just stay in my lane. I ain't. Mm -hmm. Listen, it's a lot of lanes on the highway. I'm staying in this one right here. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, ain't, I ain't getting in your lane because mm -hmm. that thing going to start beeping and it's going to tell me I can't get over. I'm going to stay right here <laughs> in my lane. So people need to understand, just stay in your lane and figure out when I look at my business, how can I create other streams of revenue within the same business model? Yeah. How can I pick this thing apart and say I can make money here, I can make money there, I can make money here? Yeah. That's what I, yeah. We have a, um, we have a 20 year old here. Absolutely. And uh, I'm sure both of y'all remember when you was 20. Yeah. Where every, like, I'm going to conquer the world. Mm -hmm. And I think even at when I was your age, I, uh, I just wanted to do whatever was going to make some money. Yeah. Absolutely. On, um, I, I want to do whatever was going to make some money so I could write a book, <laughs> but I'm going to like have T-shirts. I'm going to do, I'm going to do all kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So I want to know, um, what advice would you all give this young entrepreneur who, is this your only business? Oh, no, no. What else? No, you she said, I oh, have snap. Oh, <laughs> oh, crap. Come on. I am also a personal trainer. Mm. Um, I'm stepping into the ghostwriting business. Mm -hmm. um, I have actually written tons of articles for different people. Um, I do commissioned artwork as well. Um, I actually have a second book that I have already written and illustrated um, using my sketch abilities. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm into a lot of different spaces. Yep. Definitely. Just like me at twenty. See? <laughs> yep. All of this. Uh, can, can can we wrap our arms around her can real I, quick? Can let's I give have us, a can conversation. I give some love real quick. Come on, let's do it. Okay, so I have a lot of I have entrepreneurs who make six figures and they come to me just like you. They're like, yo, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And they think that I'm like, bro, if you really want to grow and you really want to scale, focus on that one thing. Dial in on that. Like, so what I'm saying to you is, is it's okay if you want to do all those other things, but pick one thing that you are really passionate about that at three o'clock in the morning, you would do that thing for free. That's going to be the thing that is going to allow you to grow and allow you to scale because you'll almost work every single day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it won't feel like work. You'll just be having fun. But then you're going to make so much money because what's going to happen is you're going to actually call it like you're going to walk into what you were called to do. And so many people are going to be motivated and inspired by you. They're going to want to do those things, too. And then now you can start coaching. You can start mentoring people to do the exact same thing. Now, it's okay to do all those other things on the side. But what's going to happen is once you dial in on that one thing, everybody's going to know you for that. Then they're going to trust you. You're going to show consistency. You're going to serve persistence. They're going to say, she's good at that. Right now, everybody knows LeBron James for playing basketball. If LeBron James decided to start selling cars, we're going to buy them because mm -hmm. he's showed us that he's really good at that one thing. Mm -hmm. His brand is there. He has credibility. So you got to focus on one thing so that way when people come to your social media page, they see I came to her for, let's just say, uh, how to write a book. If that's your thing and that's your niche, they should see everything on your page about how to write a book. Now, if they see how to write a book, how to work out, how to drive trucks, how to, they like, wait a minute, I don't know, I'm confused. Mm -hmm. So in order to omit the confusion and to not blur the lines, 
Focus on that one thing and let your brand speak about that one thing. And then they'll buy anything because you're going to say they're going to say, I know her. She's consistent. I like her. I can trust her. Now I buy anything from her. But you got to focus on that one thing first and then they'll buy anything else. That's good. That's good. You got I anything? agree with that. People, and I say this all the time, people don't buy products. People buy people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. So essentially they're not buying your book. They're buying Zeta, mm -hmm. you know? They, of course they're buying the book. But you understand what I mean? Like people truly buy people. And that is a fact because when people come to my page, like they, they want to do anything that I'm doing because people will be like, I've been following you for four years. I'm like, I, I can't tell you how many people on my fingers I've really been following. And I remember for four years, mm -hmm. but it's because it's because it's me, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but I would tell you to keep that fire. I would tell you to keep it because it's easy to get, um, what word am I using? It's easy to get in a space where you don't feel like doing anything. You know, you get overwhelmed. And sometimes when something's not working, because that's entrepreneurship, and I think all entrepreneurs know that, it's up and down. Mm -hmm. It's never a, yeah. a smooth coast. It's it's absolutely up and down. Some days I don't feel like getting up Zeta, mm -hmm. but I have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some days I don't feel like going to these units, but I have mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Some days I'm like, look, I'm chilling. Like, mm -hmm. I can't. So it's the fire. It's I know I gotta get this done. I told Shane, I said, Shane, look, I got eight. This, I got four chickens, four yep. checkouts. I gotta, I gotta go. I didn't feel like doing nothing. Y'all, it's been raining every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, I don't feel like going outside. You know, mm -hmm. so I really I I would recommend you. I had fire in my I had fire in my stomach at 20. I remember. Like it was yesterday. I was I was ready to get up and go get it every day. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, I'm getting a little bit. Oh, I'm like I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that is really like because I'm still young. So you only I'm only seven years older than you. So we not that I'm not saying y'all are too far, but a little we bit. are in our twenties. <laughs> <laughs> we too, like, we too no, old. we young. <laughs> Them brothers got great. Right. We are closer in age than the guys, you know. So I wasn't twenty too long ago, and I remember, you know, I was, I was. I was ready to hustle. I was ready to go get it. So I would tell you as a 20 year old, keep that fire. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I encourage, especially younger entrepreneurs, I encourage you to try to find your thing. You know what I mean? But don't do a bunch of stuff because you want to do a bunch of stuff. And we think it's cool to have a bunch of streams of income because we're doing a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to find your thing, actively be looking for it. Mm -hmm. Like, I, okay, I wrote a book and I'm pushing a book. I don't know if I'm in love with the book, but I got a book. Yeah. So I'm gonna go train. Yeah. But when you make that decision to do training, you're like, oh, I'm gonna do training because this is the lifestyle that I'm into and I want to help people. And you do it for a while, you realize, eh, I don't know if this is it. I'm gonna try artwork. Then you start art, whatever you have that focus on, give it everything you got to make sure that's not your thing. But otherwise, you'll be doing a whole bunch of stuff in a very subpar manner. You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You got it, right? Yes. Tell me what you understand. Just real first. quick. Yeah. She spoke on um, like the fire, right? And I think that is, I think that that was a good, I think that was something really good for, for I'm just going to say older, more seasoned people that may be watching this is that. We get older and we lose that fire, a.k.a. that childlike enthusiasm to actually just go and be like, I could actually be successful. We forget about all of our goals. We forget about all of our dreams. We forget about the things that we really wanted to do in life. And we let a job consume our life. We let because we had a child or two. We let because life is just life and you know, people passing away. We forget about everything that was important to us. And we just start giving up. We have to get back to that fire. We have to get back to that childlike enthusiasm and just keep that. We need to hold on to that because people just really be forgetting about who they are and what they were really called to do and that special gift that they have. And they give that gift up just because they just want to just let life life. And I feel like we all need to just like just get up tomorrow and just just start thinking about what is it I really want to do. Take some time to write down what you want to do and, and be motivated and be inspired and be encouraged to say I can actually go do it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, now, can you get something on my feed, please? No? Can I have it? I don't see it. Oh, make sure it's on Sleep is for Suckers, please. Because might, it might have another, been another page. Okay. What do you understand from this conversation? So I understand that I do need to choose something and focus on that one particular thing so I can expand on that one particular thing 
as much as I possibly can, which is what I intend on doing. I'm also into acting as well. Mm -hmm. And I have taught acting. I've taught younger kids mm -hmm. and I enjoy working with children. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to use my book to help people, well, the younger audiences mm -hmm. and use my love for working with kids to really like reach out to them and use my voice and the things that I've gone through and what I have to say to help them. Um, and I've also wanted to use my acting as well because I feel like acting is a form of therapy. Yeah. And I feel like it's a great way to reach out to a ton of different audiences. Yeah. But it depends on how you go about doing that. And I also wanted to, I intend on eventually turning my book into a film as well. Yeah. So I feel like those two things go hand in hand and those are the things that I would like to focus on. For sure. Um, just, I, th I think as entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial maturity, right now you're young, so be free. Yeah. Touch everything. Just yeah. try to feel what's going on. But as you get older, entrepreneurial maturity means I don't do every good idea that I come up with. So I used to be that where I have a good idea, I'm moving on that thing. But um, not only in the beginning of every year do I decide what I'm going to do and what I'm going to accomplish, I also decide what I'm not going to do and what I'm not going to accomplish. Mm. So that decision is just as important as the one that says, yo, I'm going to do this this year. But then I have to even say out loud, okay, I'm not going to do that, even though this past year it paid me. Even though I love this, even though, like, I, so for 2023, I wanted to go into the schools and talk to the kids and get back to what we were doing before the pandemic. But that wasn't the, that wasn't the focus. And I could 100% convince myself that this is the right thing to do because these babies need our help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially just coming back in from not going to school. It's terrible. I went to a school the other day. They said that, uh, well, a couple weeks ago, they said there's a fight every day. We can count on it. Wow. Every day. Not like there's a lot of fights here. They know we're, we are not going to get through a day without some child attacking another child every single day. And you can imagine the process of not being in school, doing virtual learning, and through this process, some of these kids are in a real tough position where they got to go to work. And when the school says, all right, y'all, come back into school, the kid is already making $12 an hour. I'm not going to school. They've been supporting their parents, and their parents say, you need to go to work. We're going to keep this homeschool thing going. But the parents don't have time to homeschool the kids. I say all this to say, I should be the savior of these children, but that's not my focus. Mm -hmm. I had to say, 2023, I am not going into the schools. 2024, it's a major objective, and we've literally put our foot on the gas this year. So you have a lot of ideas, a lot going through your head, and you got the energy to do it all. And again, I'm not saying don't, because I want you to touch everything at 20. You got time, but not much. You need to lock in and focus on something. Mm -hmm. You think this stuff makes sense? Like, all right, I want to be an actress, and I'm going to write a book, and I'm going to executive produce a movie, then I'm going to teach action classes, and they all go together. I'm telling you what it takes to make $100,000 off of this book means I need to wake up every single morning and say, I'm going to sell this book. Yep. Or to get this to be a movie, you need to wake up every single day and say, I need the money for this movie. We're going to focus on the movie. We're writing the script every single day. Yep. So... All these ideas that you think go together right now, I'm telling you, it just takes your focus and you might not understand what we're saying for another few years, but it's okay. You're young. Okay. And do what you love, essentially. You know, like for if sure. you wake up and do what you love every day, you'll never feel like you go to work. Mm -hmm. So if you like personal training, although it doesn't go with writing your book or it doesn't go with filming your movie, if you love personal training, Touch everything. do personal training. Yep. So I don't want you to take that advice like, oh, focus on one thing as... I can't do personal training anymore. No, if you love personal training, Zeta, go do personal training. Yeah. If that's an hour or two hours out of your day, like, look, I'm only going to take three clients a week. That's three hours or four hours. That's that's not the same as let me focus on personal training every day, writing my book every day, writing my film, and um, going to talk to the, the students. It's, mm -hmm. That's not the same. You know, so I just want to – I know you said – 
what you took from the conversation was focus on one thing. Like you said, you will you will understand in a couple of years, but do what you love. Yep. Yeah, do what Man, you love. Man, to be 20 again. I, I'm doing everything. <laughs> if I was 20 right now, I'm doing everything. I'm like, forget what y'all talking about. I'm touching everything. Here's another conversation yeah. I like to have. Uh, what do y'all be doing with y'all money? Dang, you just gonna just come like that? Well, like, <laughs> what y'all be doing with your money? We here now. We listen. <laughs> Me too. Zeta is here. Okay. <laughs> and I think um, we we uh, we need money to build our business, but there are a lot of holes in our financial situation, mm-hmm. and. Um, I'm I'm just now the last couple of years really getting into the investing of it. Like I'll make money, then I'll take a portion of the money and put it into something that I can't touch because mm-hmm. I know about my, something about myself. Is if I see a certain amount in the account, I have that amount. Mm-mm. But when the account gets so like low, I hustle. Yeah, yep. like I'm in grind mode because I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. hey, <laughs> hey. Things it, 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 things aren't good right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I got to come up with an idea on how to make some more money. That's a so yep. what I do <laughs> myself is I force that. When I have a good month or a good, a really good season, I got to take some of that money and put it into some real estate where I don't see it in the account, mm-hmm. where I can manufacture that feeling of fear. Like, whoa, whoa, the account's low now because I just invested in something. Yep. So I want to know, like, how you all look at your finances and business. I'm the same way. Um, I need to have a certain amount of money. It's weird. I don't know why it's that way. And then, like you said, if the account gets too low, then I'm on this. The the radar goes off. Mm-hmm. And it's so crazy. Like, what's low to us is probably super ridiculously high to other people. Yep. But it's just everybody has their own ceiling and their own floors. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I think that it's a little different for me because of my background. Um, so my first few years of entrepreneurship, um, I was doing, I was in financial services where mm-hmm. I wasn't focused like solely on credit. It was more so life insurance and retirement planning. So I have that as a background. So for me as an entrepreneur, there's a percentage of my money every single month that's going towards my IRA, my solo 401k, my mutual funds, my stocks, bonds, like like everything is being allocated. So then I get to go there and look and say, no matter what happens, no matter what takes place, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Like I've already have it projected out. And this is stuff that I've been trying to teach my mentees now. I want you guys to get into planning for retirement. Like we always talk about, oh, let's go get the bag. We're going to hustle. We're going to hustle. We're going to hustle. Mm-hmm. What happens when your tail gets too old to hustle? Mm-hmm. What happens when you're 40, you're 50, you're 60, you're 70, and you're an entrepreneur? Where's the money at then? Like what oh, are you going to do? So for me, um, that's one aspect of what I do with my money. And the other aspect is I've recently, um, within the last year and a half, because I started realizing, like you said, when it comes down to tax time, um, either we're going to spend it or they're going to take it. And so I started <laughs> to invest into real estate. So um, at the beginning of 20, at the end of 2022, I invested in a 60 unit of property. And then uh, at the beginning of 2023, I invested in a 64 unit. Wow. And now I'm in the process of probably with partners. Yeah, with partners. Like syndicate. Okay. Yep. So come together and let's just say it's maybe four million dollars that we have to put down towards this unit or what have you or these, this complex, and we all just come together and just bring all our money together and just go in on the property. Good. good. Yep. So well, that's where my money is at. Why is investing important? Because if you don't invest, then you have to pay the money to the IRS. Mm-hmm. Because for me, when I invested in the 64 unit, I think that that saved me a few hundred thousand dollars that I didn't have to pay in taxes that year. And so I would have either put up that money for that investment and save the money from not having to pay the IRS or they would have said, well, you made all of this. So we're going to tax you on all of this. Whereas I can say, well, I know I made this, sir, but I also spent all of this. Mm-hmm. And they're going to say, oh, well, we can only tax you on what you have left over on paper. Right. Yeah. And so essentially when I spend the money, I don't have to pay it in taxes so I can essentially save myself some tax liability there. And what are your bad habits? My bad habits. Um, you got some cars, bro. I got I got too many cars. I, I know. But I did I did do that to save money on taxes, too. I don't know, though, man. <laughs> I can't. I don't, I don't, I don't I did. buy that one. I did. Yes. Here, here's the reason why. The here's the reason why. I, like, I'm that friend that when everybody wants to go out all the time and pop bottles and do all, I'm not. I'm Okay, I'm just going to say my age so y'all can understand where I'm coming from. I'm about to be 40. Like, I'm not a, like, I'm not a kid. You're 31. I'm 39. 39. I'm about to be 40 in March. 
I'll be 40. So I got some seasonality. You see what I'm saying? You're right, right, Alexia. Yep. Like, I'm married. I'm about about to be 40 in December. See See what I'm saying? I'm married. I got three kids. Like, I'm not trying to go to the club all the time and Mm -hmm. just do stuff like that. So I don't spend as much money as I could spend by just buying frivolous things. And so for me, my spending comes between, like, November and December. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, we got a problem. Let's spend some money. Mm -hmm. And so now we get to go crazy. And so for me, like, just this past... This past December, I bought four cars and I bought them because I was like, I don't want to give my money away. Like I mm. bought my father a car, I bought my mom a car, I bought my wife a new car. I bought myself a few cars. So we bought cars. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I th- can't, hey, I, hey, listen, hey, Dion, hey, don't judge Part me. of it might be you might save something on something, but Bro, some I'm of that money. is you pay, you just buying cars. I'm saving yeah. money. Am I not saving money? You are saving money, but See? I feel she is too. I'm trying to get your bad habit. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you spend your money? Other than food. Okay, because I understand. I, you got to eat. We got to go out and eat with her because she's my food. I don't, be, oh, buy, I don't sure. be buying it. <laughs> <laughs> so what do, you, what do you do with your money? Uh, invest. I think that that's mm. really the key. Yeah. So anytime I'm like you, you hit it. Entrepreneurs have seasons. Mm-hmm. That's That's real life. I don't care who you are and no matter what business you are in or how much money that you make, every entrepreneur has its season. For sure. Every business has mm-hmm. its season. Mm-hmm. So for, for instance, like with Airbnb, Airbnb peak season is um like February till about September, October until kids get ready to go back to school. October to January is slow. Mm-hmm. That ain't my season for yeah. Airbnb specifically. Mm-hmm. So I'm figuring out something I need to be doing in between this time until peak season roll back around. Mm-hmm. So investing is 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 key, mm-hmm. not only for ta- heavily for tax purposes. Yeah. Like if you are an entrepreneur, you know, mm-hmm. heavily for tax purposes. But also, if something happens, if something happens, we got kids. Yep. Even you don't even have to be old for. You to feel like I gotta get it together. We can go out and something can happen now. Yep. Yeah. Disasters are happening every day. Yep. Mm-hmm. People are, and you know who's dying the most? Kids. Yep. Mm. Look, go to the news. It's these twenty year olds dying, eighteen year olds dying, these fourteen year olds dying. We we cool. Y'all good. <laughs> Y'all are fine. It's the kids that's dying. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I really truly believe you you have to invest your money because if not, Uncle Sam gonna take it away, mm-hmm. or you're gonna leave. And, and nobody's going to be left with anything. What do you think you'll invest the most in right now? Um, right now, uh, nothing, nothing specific, right? Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Nothing specific right now. I'm not doing any investing right now. Yeah. I haven't invested anything in the last couple months. Gotcha. Probably like my close of, my close of, um, my end of year for my, my fiscal year is December. Yeah. So it's only January 28th, Yeah, 27. for sure, for sure. So but I I'm saying, what do you, like throughout the, historically, like what do you invest, are you always looking for another Airbnb? Are you always looking for like dumping money? Because dumping money into processes and systems is a real expense. But yeah. like what are, what are some things that you invest in? So the last thing I invested in, I believe, was the uh, the soap line. Mm-hmm. So I bought soap line, and it's not just for my units. It's also for my mentees to buy because when I teach them how to get Airbnbs, they get their Airbnb set up, and then they have to have essentials. You have yeah. to put essentials in your unit. So I know it's something that if people are coming to me to invest into Airbnb, this is something that they are going to need. Yeah. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah. So that was the last thing that I um, – that I made an investment to was the soap line. And I think I bought about 8,000 pieces. I have my own vendor and yeah. it's, it's my soap line. So That's a dope. lot of, and I have it on Amazon as well. So a lot of my mentees, when they get the Airbnb set up, that's in my mentorship program, you know, they come in by the soap line. The last thing before that was the uh, party bus business, I believe. Right, babe? I don't know. Yes, I, I saw you did that. Does that make good money? Absolutely. We bought our party. Okay. Uh, financial literacy coach hold on (laughs) so when we bought the party bus business my uncle actually called me he was like hey Lexi because he knows that we're always investing so he's like hey Lexi um my his best friend was selling a party bus and he was older the guy was older so he didn't really know like what to do with the party bus he just got money he has like a a million dollar uh security company so he just bought a investment he was just buying to 
alleviate taxes, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, he was like, hey, Lexi, I have George about to sell the Sprinter. He's about to sell a party bus. And Jack had already been talking about getting a party bus. So I told Bay, I said, look, uh, my uncle said they got a, he got a party bus. And at the time... We were like, we don't need to pay cash for this van. Mm -hmm. The van was a hundred thousand. We was like, we don't need to pay cash for this. Like, we are really big on using other people's money. Mm -hmm. Like, I ain't the entrepreneur entrepreneur that's gonna be like, oh, I got a hundred thousand. I'm finna go spend a hundred thousand. <laughs> if I can go spend chase money, I'm gonna go spend yeah, chase money respectfully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so my uncle was like, so I talked to to the guy who was selling the van, and he said, well, I don't really want to do no no finance no finance. Mm -hmm. And we know we both know a lot of people in the city. Yeah, and we both have a heavy influence so we was like man we gotta get this van so we told him we was like look just give us three months I don't care how much money you make it I didn't want to come out of pocket with $100,000 yeah. at the time we just wasn't doing that so I said look I said babe let him know like we'll we'll pay it off in three months like we'll mm -hmm. do a 90 day payment plan mm -hmm. so we paid the van off I think we paid like 33 something a month mm -hmm. we, we invested like 30 grand a month oh, wow. for three months for three whole months to get the van. And we literally made our money back within the first year. Really? A hundred thousand dollars. We 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 doubled our money. We we tripled our money for our van in That's the first dope. year. Mm -hmm. So everything for our van now is profit. The only thing, the only expense we have is gas, mm -hmm. of course, which our clients pay, and then our insurance. Yeah. We have no note. We don't owe anybody. We don't we don't have a note or anything. That's so <laughs> That was uh, that was the the last major the soap line. It's kind of it's not really slow, but it's not something I'm like, oh, I'm about to pay my uh, car note with this. Yeah. You know, it's another source of income. But the party bus business is 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 lit. It's super lit, and we get to use it too. So mm -hmm. she so she bought a party bus to mm -hmm. save money on taxes, yeah. but then the following year she made more money. So now she has the same tax problem though. So we gotta keep investing our money, right? Correct. You gotta yeah. keep you gotta keep investing because now For they sure. want money off. See, yeah. This money that I done made from the money I done spent to not pay y'all. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, but so Dion, that's a fact. You, you can't buy a Lamborghini every year, bro. Like, <laughs> nope. I can't. I cannot. I cannot. I Yo, think real, real, real quick. Um, if you want to, I want to uh, hear from you all. If y'all have any questions on your entrepreneurial journey, we pinned. I thought we pinned that comment. Then we, had to. Then we pinned that comment. I have pinned it. Hold on, let me see. No, it is a pinned I'm message. Watching the comments ask too. your I'm question. Watching. I'm watching. It's just take I'm just the ask your questions on camera live off and just mm -hmm. put that 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 link. And if you if you look at that pinned link, you all you can click that and you could join this live. I'll see you. You'll see us. And you can ask a question live on Social Proof. Okay, so just click that link and uh, we will see you calling in. And you can join straight from your cell phone, wherever you're at. Um, just click that link and you could join, okay? Um, so, yeah, so we'll pin that. We'll just put the link here. Actually, I'll do it. But go ahead, Lex, sorry. Go ahead, Lex. Oh, I was about to say, um, I think once you start reaching a certain level of uh, finances, like once you start making a certain amount of revenue, mm -hmm. I really think real estate is the go-to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for If sure. you think about it, most high-level entrepreneurs and influence, influencers, their first go-to is real estate. Yeah. yeah. One, you can make a high return on your investment, and two, you don't have to be there every single day for it to get done. Mm -hmm. So I think, Zeta, um, real estate is long-term. It's generational. It's like for your kids' kids. You yeah. know, like this land ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. This everything can move but our land is not moving mm -hmm. so i think that real estate is definitely the go-to if you think in long term absolutely yeah. and uh i want to let's kind of like break down the the philosophy behind investing too because right now you can sell this book for how much 20 bucks 20, yes. 20 bucks you can sell the book for 20 bucks and then you'll have the 20 dollars but if you want another 20 dollars what do you got to do you gonna invest? No, you gotta sell another book. Well, yeah. Or well, you, if you're a personal trainer, right? But yeah. You train somebody, they you give gotta, you some money. Right. But if you want some more money, you gotta train someone else. What were you about to say? Mm -hmm. Well, I was gonna say when I said invest, like reinvest in, you can also reinvest in your business. A hundred percent, for right. sure. The only challenge with that is which you should. The only challenge with that is that process never stops. Right. And you can make good money doing that. So I came from the t-shirt business where I sell t-shirts for $25. It cost me $5 to print it. I print up 100 shirts, $500. I sell the 100 shirts for 25. I turn it into 2,500. We take some of that money and we buy more shirts. But the only way I get more money in 
is I have to sell a shirt. If a book doesn't get sold, no matter how many books you sell, the next money has to come from another book sale. You get what I'm saying? Right, mm-hmm. yes. What we're saying here is, as an entrepreneur, like I'll, I put money into uh, real estate. And they are the let's say I, I got a sixty unit too that I don't I don't own the whole sixty but I put in a certain amount of money let's just say I put in thirty thousand dollars let's say I put thirty thousand dollars into that real estate what happens is if I buy it in twenty twenty four by twenty twenty nine that thirty thousand dollars that I put in to that property it will appreciate meaning that thirty might be worth fifty. Because the property value went up. But also, that $30,000 in your bank account sits in your bank account until you're ready to use it, right? Right. But the $30,000 that I put into the real estate endeavor, every quarter, they pay me some more money. They pay me some money on that Mm -hmm. $30,000. So it might be be $2,000 a quarter or $1,000 a quarter. Yep. Which... You might think, wow, I gave 30000 but I'm only getting $1,000 or $4,000 a year. But you get the 4000 but your thirty is still there. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you want to you wanna set up a process where your money makes money for you instead of you having to go sell a book to make money for you. Right. Mm-hmm. But you don't go heavy in investing because you need the money to keep buying more books. But this is the time where you start studying stocks or whatever. Mm-hmm. You can get a, uh, what's it called? What's the, um, it's like a bunch of stocks. Mutual funds. Mutual funds or ETFs. Yep. So you can take $50 or and annuities. put it into the stock market, $100. And if you do that process for, uh, uh, you know, over the next 10 years, you'll realize that money that you put little by little starts to pay you. So the whole goal in being wealthy, man, and I think we just need to have a conversation around this is, how do you get your money to make the money for you instead of you making the money? Right now, you make your money. Mm -hmm. You gotta go get a client or go get a sale. But the pinnacle is to have your money make your money for you. So Mm -hmm. I know you have uh, Airbnbs and Toros and it's not, like every time you're dropping the car off at the airport, which is why we quit that. Cause yeah, <laughs> my wife was pregnant. It, it was just like bad timing. My <laughs> wife was pregnant and she's like, Oh, somebody booked the car. You gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take the car down to the airport. I'm like, <laughs> I, I started this so that you can have a business. Now I'm like, Oh, but like on the way, make sure you stop the car wash and you vacuum it out. I'm like, yo, baby, I ain't bougie or nothing, but I just, this ain't typically what I do. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, let's shut this whole thing down. Okay. <laughs> Can you kind of share some ways how your money makes you money? Yeah. So I think the ideal goal in entrepreneurship is for it to be passive, mm-hmm. to have passive mm-hmm. income. You don't want to, like, you want to be able to exchange your time for money. Like you don't want to be working for every single dollar. I don't think nobody wants to do that. Um, But for me, like specifically Airbnb is a passive income business unless you are in the business, but I don't have to be there when my guests check in. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be there when they check out. I don't have to be there during their stay. I don't have to be there at all. Um, And it still makes money. Like I wake up to deposits every single day. Here's a payout. Mm -hmm. Here's a payout. That's passive. Mm -hmm. So I think it's about the business that you choose because like if you were a truck driver, yeah, you can have a driver on the road, but you got to do some stuff in that trucking business. (laughs) We had a trucking company and it is not easy. So I think that it really depends on the business that you choose because I don't really see, I mean, besides like being on, I'm trying to think about your businesses, personal training cannot be passive because you got to be there to change, to, to uh, train your clients. For sure. Uh, Selling a book. I mean, especially until, I mean, still, even when you become the greatest, the best book selling author in America, (laughs) (laughs) um, you, that, that requires a lot of work, you know, going to vendors, uh, events and networking Mm -hmm. events and vendor tables. They want to see you. I, I can't go and sell this book. They're going to be like, well, who is Zeta? I'm going to be like, well, she's my friend and she had a story. It's not the same as you. <laughs> it don't hit the same. It don't hit the, it same, don't hit the same. Right? So um, 
even with the party, the Sprinter van, the party bus business, like we throw a driver in there and she takes off. I don't see the van probably until the next trip. So I really think it's about the business that you choose. Cause I can give you uh, my passive income ideas all day, but that won't help you sell your book. Um, that won't help you personal training. Cause like I said, personal training can't, can't be passive. So I think that um, it's really about the business that you choose. Yeah. What y'all think? What, what, what <laughs> I would say no is, um, I think at, cer at a certain point in time in your entrepreneurial journey, you need to take some of the money and you need to figure out ways that you can maybe potentially create passive income with in the industry that you're in right now um, or the thing that you're doing. So like with me, one of the things that I teach my mentees is how to take the skill set and the knowledge that you currently have and how to go create passive income through digital products and services. So we're talking about now you may be a fitness expert or you may know how to write that book. Well, then why don't you teach other people how to be a fitness expert or how to write a book? Mm -hmm. And now you can create a course and you can offer that to people. You can create an ebook and write ebooks instead of it being a physical product. You can create the digital version of your book and you can say, well, I'm going to teach you how I wrote an ebook in 90 days, how I wrote a physical book in 90 days. So they're buying your digital product to learn how to create a physical mm -hmm. product. How to be an author in 90 days. That could be a tagline or a slogan that you can take. But what you're doing is you're creating digital products that people can buy that you can make money off of 24 hours a day, seven days a week and not have to do any work. And then you got to get to the part. And this may be just super deep, but this is just where I'm at. I'm in, I'm in the space of creating SaaS where I mean, I am talking about being in the digital world and not having to really provide any products Explain or any what SaaS is. It's a software as a service. So I am in the software space where my mind is now going towards creating softwares. And, there, and there's a lot of people who think that if you don't charge a lot, you can't make a lot of money. And that's not true. Whereas I have a product that is $147 and it makes me a lot of money because the, the value that people get and the return on the investment that they're providing, the return is far greater, right? So you can actually charge a very low price point and make a lot of money. Example, that book, if you created a how to write a book in 90 days or how to become an author in 90 days and you were charging $27 for a digital book and you sold a thousand thousand of those every single month, because you don't have to ship nothing. There's nothing to ship. There's no real product. It's all digital, right? And so they can get access to that and actually make money. So when you think about it from that perspective, you can create the digital products and you can start going into coaching. And uh, yes, you're still working, but the reality is that that would be an easier way for you to take your money and make money. And then also some of it will really be passive as well, but you'll be able to scale and grow from that perspective. I love it. I think we have a, uh, a live caller. What we got? Um, there we go. We have Cope on the live call. Cope, you're on Free Smoke Cope? with David. Yes. Coop. C O P C O P E. Coop. Cope. 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 C O P E. Cope. 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 Okay. <laughs> What's up, Cope? Oh, Cope jumped off. Okay. Well, maybe maybe not. Okay. Cope. We'll 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 bring you back, brother. Um Okay. Um What do you understand? So I understand that there's a, <laughs> I'm learning a lot today, honestly, Good. but like, thank you guys so much, honestly. Um, so in terms of making passive income and like, first of all, I feel like I'd need to use whatever I make from the things that I'm currently doing now to invest in real estate. Definitely. Most definitely. Um, so I can start making more money mm -hmm. um and uh i i feel like i i don't think i need to change my uh like what i want to do um but like what he was saying um definitely use what i'm doing now to create things like digital products yeah. and um expand on the fields that i'm already in in a more productive way financially yeah um, so I'm definitely, definitely going to use that. What do you do with your money? So, <laughs> um, right now I just reinvest. I try my best to reinvest in my business. I'll mm -hmm. take part of what I make mm -hmm. and not touch it. Mm -hmm. And then I'll use that to like buy more books so I can have, cause I, I definitely make more money, um, selling them myself mm -hmm. in person at like my own book events. Absolutely. Um, so it's like, 
buying more books so I can sell them in person and reinvesting in just different things for my businesses, different products that I need to produce the best products for my uh, clients and everything like that. Good, good. Okay. Um, very important conversation that needs to be had is uh, who do you have to become to be successful? So I, I'm a strong believer that it's not what you do necessarily like because we want to fix what we do and we want to be get be better at what we do but what we do is kind of um a losing battle if that's the focus because you could tell a, a third grader to play basketball but until they like start practicing and become passionate and become skillful at the thing that they're doing playing basketball they'll only be subpar but if you work on you becoming a better player, you become better. Make sense? So there are somebody, the reason I think we talked about last week, I think the reason Kobe Bryant was the best basketball player in the world um, because no one told him that he was the best basketball player in the world. No one explained to this man that he didn't have to work so hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, t you, you go, yeah, you go. Nobody, nobody told him that he, he didn't have to practice when everybody else isn't practicing. It's some, it was something in his brain that said, I don't like that I missed this shot this night. So I'm going to go to the gym the next day and I'm going to practice that shot a thousand times. It takes a special person to even see the fact that, yes, I'm already one of the best basketball players in the world, but I still need to practice harder than everybody else. And that is a mindset adjustment. So as we start building our businesses, and I don't know if that this would be the case for you all, but uh, once you started seeing things from a different perspective, did the things that you start seeing change? Uh, yes. Um, I had to realize that, like, I, I had got up to a point in my business where I got frustrated and I felt like my business wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't that my business wasn't working. It actually was that the business was actually just working on me. Mm. Like, I hadn't reached a level of maturity and business understanding in order to actually get to the next level that I was seeking. And so this whole time I was getting frustrated and trying to figure out why is it not working? Like, like I had, I had moments where I was just like, one of my main goals is like to become a millionaire. And so until I hit that point, I kept questioning myself and even questioning God. And I was just like, what's going on here? What is the problem? And he had to remind me that it's actually working. It's just working on you. You just need, you need to keep putting in the work and eventually it will work. So, you know, I had to understand that life is a two sided coin where um, it's either working on you or it's working for you. And so if life is working on you, it's working on you so that you could become that person that actually can go execute on the thing that you were called to do. Mm -hmm. And then what ends up happening is life starts to work for you. And then you start to see the fruits of the work, the labor from the work that you actually are putting in. And so this is good for her because at 20, writing a book and doing all these different things, you're going to get to a point to where you're going to say this entrepreneurial thing is not working. Mm -hmm. It's just not working. Yep. Dad, I'm just going, I'm going to go get a job. And it's not working. And it's not that it's not working. It is working. You just have to keep putting in the work until it actually starts working for you instead of working on you. Because over time, like Shan said, he said, what type, what type of person that we have to become? Nobody can really define the person that we have to become. We couldn't define what type of person Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan had to become. They just had to keep working and perfecting their craft and what they wanted and what that outcome and what success looked like for them in order for life to actually start working for them. Mm-hmm. Yep. hundred percent. We got a caller? Let's do it. All right. We have Rhea on Free Smoke with David and everybody on the couch. What's up, Rhea? Rhea? Yes. Rhea, are you there? <laughs> she muted herself. Don't mute yourself, Rhea. <laughs> What's up, Rhea? Rhea, hit the unmute button. I want to go here. You can do this. I know you can. 
I did, but I just didn't want to show my finger. Get your finger off the look. Get your finger off the camera. I saw your thumb. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> Rhea, Rhea is struggling right now. You hear me? Um, Rhea, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. I knew it was a C. I saw it. Now I just saw your hand. I knew it was your thumb. I know a thumb when I see it. Rhea, we can't hear you. Oh, she's there. Okay. Oh, she jumped off. Hey, Rhea, um, real quick, you can't go to another screen on your phone. Ah. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, 0 for 2. Good. 0 for 2. All right, cool. Uh, we're 0 for 2 right now. <laughs> we're 0 for um, 2. So I, w- I want to talk about, like, what what does – she's back? Mm-hmm. Rhea, listen. <laughs> I need you to act right. <laughs> All right. Where you at? You got to unmute yourself. Rhea, unmute yourself. You can do this. It's interesting. I just want y'all to know that our system is good because we press, we checked it. This is user, this is user error right here. <laughs> Rhea, can you hear us? She just needs to unmute. Unmute yourself, please. No? Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next person. Okay. All right. Um, what does it look like becoming something? You know what I mean? Like becoming the right person. Because mm. I, I have it in some areas. Entrepreneurship, I execute. Okay? Yep. Yeah. When it comes to going to the gym, you know what I mean? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Come on. This is a safe space here. <laughs> Um, there are two people that one person really wants to become healthy and change their life and they have this image of, you know, who they, how they're going to look in their head. And then there's me. You know what I mean? It's not as important to me. I'm already married and my wife already told me, she's like, yo, I don't want you too in shape. She says, she's like, I don't want you to be too in shape. I like the little gut. That's what she told me. Zeus, I'm telling you, I wouldn't make this stuff up. She's like, hey, don't be getting. I started doing this intermittent fast and I was losing weight and all that. She's like, don't be losing too much weight. I need my little tummy. I said, come on, baby. <laughs> so for there's something right now for me, and maybe it won't always be this way, but it's something that's not clicking in my head right now. Going to entrepreneurship it clicks. I'm there. I fire off because this is what I want. I can see it clearly. I personally develop myself. I've read a bunch of books. I watched a, 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 I've listened to a bunch of ebooks, videos. I go to the conferences, things of that nature. So for for business, it's clicking. Somebody that is like super dedicated to going to the gym, for some reason they can't get out the stalls for entrepreneurship. So I know we all have these 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 barriers, right? But if there's something that you really, really want to do in life, how do you become the person that can actually execute? And I want to hear from you, Lex. That's a really great question, Shans. Um, I really think your life is what you make it. You get what you focus on. Yeah. So focus on what you want. Um, I, I feel that I think a lot of entrepreneurs have an issue with <laughs> getting in the gym. Mm. I really think it's about goal setting. I really think it's about goal setting because if you are in the mindset of, I want to make sure that like, we know, you know what you're great at. Some things we don't have to try yet. And Mm -hmm. one of those things could be entrepreneurship. I think entrepreneurship runs for certain people like water, you know, like Mm -hmm. it's just a natural thing. We are naturally entrepreneurs. Right. But going to the gym might not be that water for your life. Um, So when I say goal setting, I mean, so for me, I'll use me as an example. I wasn't the girl that that will always want to go to the gym either, but I knew it was important important for my physical health. Yeah, I had the mental down pat. I had the 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 entrepreneurship down pat. I I felt like I was a great mom. So the only thing I felt like I was missing was the same was yeah. going to the gym or having some type of physical health. My spiritual life was you know I was going to church, so I had I kind of had touched everything in my life except going to the gym. So yeah. I feel that. 
at some point I started goal setting, like, okay, something's, something's missing here. I'm eating all this food, spending all this food, money on food, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to the gym. Goal setting. When I set goals and I don't, so if I say, so my, my gym going is doing Pilates. I love Pilates. I have to go three times a week. So at some point, I don't, sometimes I don't feel like getting up. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's raining. I don't feel like going outside. So I said, okay, Lexi, so you go to the Pilates three times a week. When you don't, when you don't reach this goal, you have consequences. Mm-hmm. So for me, I love Starbucks. When I don't get up and go to Pilates, one of those days out of three, I don't get Starbucks for a week. Oh, wow. I got to have my Starbucks. But that is how I function. Like, I function off goal setting, even in my spiritual life. When I don't finish my books, mm-hmm. I don't get Starbucks. I got to have Starbucks. <laughs> I, love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I got to have matcha. So <laughs> that is that is how I become the person that I want to become. I goal set and I, I reach my goals. I think sometimes as entrepreneurs, because essentially, like, nobody holds you accountable more than you hold yourself accountable. That's a fact. I don't care if you have a husband, a wife, a child, a, a dad, like nobody holds you accountable more than you. Dad is already successful. Like Zeta has to be, Zeta has to get there. Mm-hmm. Dad's going to let Zeta, Zeta take her course. So now it's on you. Dad's not here to hold you accountable. He's, he's there to be a dad, right? The wifey is there to be a wife. So when it comes to being the person that you want to be, you got to hold yourself accountable. I learned that like in, in these last from 20 to 27, I have started holding myself accountable. Well, I won't say for the last seven years, I'm lying. I'll say maybe like the last two years, I have been really heavy on holding myself accountable to reach my goals. If you don't have goals, you really don't have, it's like, what are you working towards? It's true. Some people really don't, ha- some entrepreneurs really don't have goals. And I really don't understand that for the life of me. Like, how are you moving through life with no goals? Mm-hmm. Yep. You have no goals to get married. You have no goals to make a million dollars or a billion dollars or a trillion dollars. Like you have no goals to build a business. Like, where are you going and what are you doing? So in order for you to become the person that you want to become, and this is for everybody, like watching, set some goals and accomplish them. Don't just let your goals fall by the wayside. You don't accomplish them. Like, oh, I didn't get to, um, Go to five events this year, so, like, it's cool. No. Mm -hmm. Like, set your goals and crush them. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to crush your goals like you. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be as great as you are. Nobody's going to want you to be as great as you are besides you. That's a fact. You know, like, so that, I don't don't look for nobody to to make sure I'm great. I'm going to make sure I'm great. My mom, my parents, my family, they are so proud of me, but I get fueled up by me. Zayda, I don't get fueled up by nobody else. I get fueled up by my goals. I make my goals unreachable so I can keep going. Mm. I don't set, like, low goals. Like, okay, I'm going to make sure I go to the gym twice a week. That's easy. Mm. Hell no. I want to make sure I need to go get in the room with Shans. Mm -hmm. I need to go get in the room with whoever. That's that's, that's what I need to do. So whatever I need to do to go go there at the top, that's what I want to do. I don't settle for nothing. Couch, don't this couch ever settle for hot. anything. This couch yeah. getting hot over here. Yeah, don't know what's going on. <laughs> don't settle hot. for nothing. <laughs> yeah. Go take everything. Yep. Yeah. Everything. Every yeah. time, go get it. In the, in the, so we, we, let's say we set the goal, right? I think that's the, the that, it's the hard part, right? Being able to set the goal. Mm-hmm. This is what I want, right? It's, because it's hard to like have multiple goals. You have yeah. to have a target. For sure. But then after you set the goal, that becomes the easy part. Mm -hmm. And now the hard part is getting yourself to actually go after it. I got you. Mm -hmm. I got you, brother. It is, it's it's change, it's timing, and it's vision. Change, everybody write it down. Change, timing, and vision. What I mean by change is uh, you have to be ready for the change that is going to take place in your life. Mm -hmm. Like you can't think that you're going to be able to stay the same person that you are today and hit that new goal or target that you have set for tomorrow. You have to be ready to change. And unfortunately for most people, because we operate in our own senses, most of the time for a person to change, they actually have to go through something. They got to go through something like maybe somebody in your family passes away or maybe maybe you lose your job. Most most entrepreneurs, look, if y'all think about it, most successful entrepreneurs, they're successful and they tell you this horror story about how they got fired from a job. Mm-hmm. And you like every entrepreneur, how is it that every successful entrepreneur has either lost a job or something drastic happened to them that they say, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm changing my life forever. I'm never going back to that. I'm not going to be the same person ever again. Yep. So some, sometimes we have to get some, something that hurts us, something that makes us feel a certain kind of way 
for us to say, I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm not, yeah. I'm not applying for no more jobs. In 2016, when me and my job separated, and I was making $130,000 a year, and we couldn't see eye to eye, and I had to walk out the door. I said, I'm never working for nobody ever again. That was yeah. in 2016, wow. and I was making $130,000 a year. And I could have went easy, got another job, making six figures, but I said, if I can make y'all, like if, if I can let y'all pay me six figures, I can know I can go do that on my own. Mm -hmm. So that was a change. You got to be ready for the change. The timing part is everybody has a right time in their life where they said, it's my time. Yeah. It's, it's my time. It's my time to walk into my season. It's my time to walk into a different version of me. It's my time to show people who who counted me out that they can't count. It's the timing. <laughs> like you got to like like again, once you once you decide you're going to change, then once you fall into the right time, like you the last piece is just having vision. That's mm -hmm. it. If if I feel like my job let me go and I'm ready to change. And it's at the right time where not, I'm not even going to think about applying for another job. If I got a vision to be a successful business owner and I can see myself, let's just say, walking across the stage and receiving an award for uh, being a philanthropist or whatever it is, as you can see, there, the number one thing that we have as entrepreneurs that makes us successful is our vision. Mm -hmm. I already see success. I operate off one little small saying is Fineo. Fineo is failure is not an option. I don't even know what failure is. I don't know what not succeeding is. I don't know what not being successful looks like. I already see myself doing certain things that I've planned and mapped out based upon what I'm doing today is going to come in effect tomorrow. That's a fact. And then the number one thing that I feel like that keeps us all grounded is we have we all have a spirit of of, of, of discernment where we know that this is all happening because we're walking in alignment based upon what God wants us to do. Like once you mesh all of those things, the timing is right. You're ready for a change. You see the vision and you walking in your purpose. There's ain't nothing that can stop that. That's a fact. That's Come on, girl, fact. this couch shot. Come on, sit back. <laughs> <on this couch. laughs> um, so tell me what you understand. So what I gathered from what they were saying is to be an entrepreneur, you have to be relentless. Mm -hmm. You That's have to relentlessly go for what you want. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way in the gym. Mm -hmm. When I'm working out, I do not feel like going to the gym. You, your daddy's child. I, I do not <laughs> feel like going to the gym. It's so, it's so hard. But it's the same way with being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. It's really hard, even when you're doing something that you love to do. It's mm -hmm. really hard because it's a lot of management. You are the whole brand. Yeah. You are creating this 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 project. This this is your child. Mm -hmm. You're creating this from scratch. Yeah. And you're just you just gotta grind. And you gotta go for it. What we use in the gym. This is what we, they taught us during um, personal training uh, training for personal training. Smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Mm -hmm. And I apply that to every aspect of my life, For including sure. es especially entrepreneurship. I feel like, so everything y'all were saying was completely like, like completely resonated with me. Like, Love it. And yeah, definitely have to be relentless. Yeah. Have to be. But I'm in the same position you in when it comes to the gym though. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if me and you went, it's like, I really want to get in shape. Like I used to be a college athlete. I used to be in shape, shape. Yeah. And my wife be like, my wife is like, she like, it's cool. But then at the same time, she like, but you know, if you want to go ahead and get that body right, like, you know, it's like, so <laughs> I, I fight with myself, but here's the deal. If remember I said the change, right. Or timing. If me and Dave went to the doctor and the doctor said, you got about 12 months. If you don't get in the gym, we're going to go to the gym every day, every day, <laughs> every day. Sure. sure. So, so why wait until the doctor says, why wait until something drastic happened in your life for you to actually start to, let's just say, be reactive? Why not just be proactive? Yeah. Why wait until we 50 and 60 to try to start hitting the gym because we're like, yo, I want to get another 30 years out of it. No, if we can start going to the gym now, we can mm -hmm. start eating healthy now, then we can prolong life. And we ain't got to worry about no high blood pressure, no diabetes and none of these issues. It's the okay. same thing you apply that to life and entrepreneurship. If I want to be successful in my, let's just say now that you're 20, if I want to be successful and I want to be a multi-million in my 25 and my 30s and I want to go ahead and retire once I hit 30, we got to go today. We can't wait for something drastic to happen. We can't wait till I lose, I lose a pain 
parent and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get serious about everything or my life is on the line. I'm going to get serious about everything. No, it's okay to get serious now. And it's okay to set big goals. I know what they told you at the gym, but I didn't get where I was at by setting small, realistic goals. I set big goals that scared the hell out of me. And then what I did was because I was so in alignment with believing in myself and believing in my goals, Mm -hmm. I I would tell Shans, I'll tell Alexa, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell my mom, I'm going to tell my daddy, I'm going to tell everybody. So now y'all can hold me accountable. I've been telling, my friends been telling, They've been telling me, this dude right here been saying I was crazy as hell for a long time because <laughs> I always talked about being a multi-millionaire and the things that I was going to do and the cars that I was going to drive. I didn't have it yet, but I knew that I was going to get it at some point in time, but they called me crazy. Yeah, facts, facts. Look, we got a, we got a caller in. Um, what's up? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can y'all hear me? I believe, Yes, sir. And I think we could change that guest one to his name, I believe. Just kind of figure that out now. What's up? Hey, um, I just I had to pull over because uh, y'all is giving a lot of gems and I really appreciate it. You know, just being new in this entrepreneur space and then uh, just learning to understand it, you know, especially with people around you. Dang. You, I think you pulled over in the wrong place. You break, you you breaking up. You breaking up. My boy going to town too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's all in. He's all in. Dang. I really want to hear what you're saying too. Goodness gracious. Hey, just um, pull over somewhere. Can, can he else. call in? He could call in, right? Might be able to call in. Wow, well, I don't know if we, I don't know if we set up for it today. We're trying something new today. We are 0 for 3 with these call-ins. <laughs> Somebody that's like at your house, okay, with good service. Wi-Fi. <laughs> with Wi-Fi, call in. Let me see what's going on. All right, so I don't know how to how to take that off right now. So um, go down to, see at the bottom left-hand side, just main go to camera. main caller, main camera. Yep. Right right there. Right, ah, 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 Go down, go down. Right there. Right. Yep, there you go. There you go. Click it again. Click it again. Click okay. the play button. There, there we, we go. go. All right, cool. All right, we're going we're going to keep trying, y'all. Just 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 keep giving us a shot. <laughs> um I I I think it's uh how how we become this special person. There's a there's a specific way. And it sounds so cliché and I hate even saying the word because people don't put enough respect on the word, but it's called personal development. Mm. Yeah. And what you choose to consume and be consumed by matters. So that's one type of person where we got we to gotta protect what we see and what we hear. If, some, if one of my friends start posting too crazy on Instagram, I unfollow them because I have to protect what goes into my eyes. Great. Very important. Mm-hmm. And everything that we think of and everything that we do, we didn't come up with this stuff on our own. It's all our, our lived experiences and Facts. you know all the things that we let come into our mind. And most of the things that we, uh, we believe to be true came from some other influences. It's not like we just come up with it ourselves. It's yep. how we've been raised or what we see or what we choose to listen to. I remember I talked to somebody one time and... Cause I never really dated. I never dated anybody before my wife, but this one person I that I knew, <laughs> she watched. <laughs> she watched um, uh, uh, what's it called reality TV show. Mm. She, she loved them, and in Poison. if we have a disagreement, she's bringing up examples yep. from the reality show. Horrible. Yo, no, because look, I was watching the show the other day and they was talking about, I was like, yo, you, you don't know that's not real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is created. And the problem is people watch reality shows and they're modeling themselves after characters that aren't even acting like themselves. So you're modeling somebody that's modeling somebody else that was on a script <laughs> or or if you are in an environment and there is a central thought process in this group of friends, 
you will adopt that thought process because there's nothing wrong with what they're saying in this particular circle. And it's not that these people are bad people. It's just, it starts to shape you. Mm -hmm. So I give you a real example. And this is like, there's like levels to this thought. So I was talking to um, Ryan from The Gathering Spot. And he's a brilliant, brilliant person. And he's raised millions of dollars of capital because he had this idea. And he's like, yo, I'm about to raise this money. Even on an interview, he's like, yo, I have to raise. We thought it was going to be a million dollars. And then we realized it's going to be more of $3 million. If I have an idea, you know what I do? I come up with some product or service or some sort of campaign. And I sell the product or service and I make the money to pay for it. That's my thought process. I come up with something to make some money to pay for the thing that I want to do. But that's not his thought process. His first thought is, I have an idea. I need to find some other people to give me money to support this idea. I, got, I went to his office last week, last Friday or Thursday. One, it was yeah, last week. And I'm going through this idea, this plan that I think would be really cool for us to do. And I said something like, um, yeah, like this, in this way, I know like our first year, we can make a million dollars, no problem. And I messed up. Because he said he was sitting back, he was looking at the plan, he said, yo, this is a really good plan. He said, although I do see a million dollars, I also look at every plan as, okay, how's it going to make a million, but how's it going to make 10, and how's it going to make 100? And if it doesn't pass the $100 million test, I'm not doing it. If this plan can't make me $100 million, if I don't see any pathway on how what we're talking about is going to make $100 million, I don't do it. My friend group says, oh, we're going to come up with a million-dollar plan? It's up. A million-dollar plan is good, right? A million? Mm-hmm. If we sat down, we were going to start a business. And I was like, yo, Zeta, we're going to make a million dollars. You'll be excited. I know I'd be excited. <laughs> yeah. You'd be excited, right? Come on, a, a whole million? Do you know that a million dollars is $83,000 every single month consistently for 12 months? 83000 mm-hmm. You know how much I made at the Cheesecake Factory? Like 30 <laughs> a year. <laughs> And we're talking about coming up with a plan to make 80 something. So this is my, my current mindset. But there are other people, and this is because of kind of like the things that I see and the people that I'm around. But he's around billionaires. He's around $100 million people that train him to think that way. So mm. I'm actually flawed. In me coming up with these plans, from his perspective, it's not worth it. From my perspective, I love it. I said to myself, oh, I got to get around a different circle. Yeah. That see things a little bigger. Bring them in, Nella. Let's do this. All right, yo, this is the last time <laughs> we're going to bring somebody into this call, and I really need y'all to act right. Okay, okay we got okay. camera on. You look like you in a stable place. Oh, You're hold on, hold on. Before we get too excited. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you we hear us? We got camera on. You're in a stable place. You look like this is going to be good. Audio? Do not let me down. Audio? <laughs> say, say something. Hey. All right. Okay. We're here now. We're good. We're good. Okay. What's up? What's your name? My name is Marley. Hey, Marley. How can we help you? Um, I guess my biggest um struggle. Let me give you just a small um just backstory. I'm a single mom with two kids. I've been a bus driver for a decade. And just recently, I'm 40 years old, so I'm starting kind of late. And just recently, I started a mentorship with a, a real estate investment, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm learning a whole bunch of things about real estate investment. And for me, my biggest struggle is time management yeah. because I work. I, my report time at work is 3.45 in the morning. Mm. So I work, I drive buses, I do nine and a half hours a day. I get off around 1.30 in the afternoon. 
And then I come home. Sometimes I have to stop by. Hey, real quick, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why 3.45 in the morning? Because uh, I get to be at work around the time that the kids are in school. So when they get home from school, I'm home. They're not home alone all afternoon mm. while I'm working. Yeah. And since I'm working nine and a half hours, I get to leave for work while they're in school. They go to school, get on their bus, go do their thing. And then when they get home from school, I'm home with them. Got it. Okay. And All right, cool. I'm trying so, to do the... Uh-huh. So your goal is to get into real estate, but you're saying you're having an issue with time management? Yes, because I come home and then I'm I'm trying to look for foreclosure homes. And so I go look for, pull my list for foreclosure homes. I have to do phone calls and I'm doing phone calls and, you know, doing that for about four or five hours. Sometimes I reach people, sometimes I don't. And I've been in this mentorship for about a year now. I started at the beginning of last year and I still haven't even uh, closed on my first deal. Let me ask you, when you say four or five hours, how many days a week is that? Because I know it's not every day. No, it's not. I try to do it almost every day, but for the most part, it's like three, four days a week. That's still good. Mm -hmm. That's still good. What do you think the biggest issue is? I think that, um, when I get home, after everything, after waking up so early in the morning and going to work and still having to deal with, you know, cooking and making sure the kids are good and all that, when I sit down to actually, I feel like I'm not giving it. 100%. I'm going through the motions. I'm reading and I'm going through what I'm supposed to say and what the conversation is supposed to be. But I feel like I'm not 100% because I'm just tired and exhausted at the end of the day. So the issue doesn't seem like time management, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Go for it. I think that, so what I would suggest in a situation like that is I think something that you have to understand is motivation does not last discipline does so what's what was what is given to me is you're having discipline issues mm -hmm. because you can get home every day and do something for three or four hours but if you're not retaining that information to go out and do it then that's a problem meaning there is a discipline issue somewhere um and I, and I know that could be hard waking up at 345 every day, coming home at 130, having to get the kids together because ideally we are a mom first, right? Real estate doesn't come before being a mom. Uh, I understand yeah. that because I'm a mom. But I also want you to understand that real estate is also not an easy uh, industry to get into because it's a, uh, once you get into it and once you start, it's amazing. But that startup, especially that first property is no joke. Mm hmm like, it's, it's not a joke. So I don't want you to be too hard on yourself either. Like, oh, it's been a year. I know people who get into real estate and they don't close their first deal in so two or three years, but they stay consistent. And right. I think that's any business, really, like, especially for something that's going to make you a lot of money because you can go buy a property for $30,000. You can, you can put uh, 100000 I don't know, just throwing numbers. You can put 40000 into it. You 70000 You can have an ARV of 140000 You made $70,000. Like, that's not, some people don't even make that in a year. You know, so if right. you go do that and you make that investment, you sit in okay for a little while. That takes time. That takes discipline. Nothing worth having comes easy. So I think that you have to um, stay disciplined, number one, and and have some grace with yourself. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. some grace with yourself. Because I, I, don't, I don't know if I can get up at 345. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can barely make it at 5 a.m. sometimes yeah. and 6 a.m. So I commend you for that. <laughs> I actually get up earlier than that because my report time at work is 3.45. Oh, and I yeah. got it. Got yeah, it. So. Yeah, one of, one of my things is I don't, um, I would like for you to like track, starting now, track how mm -hmm. many calls you're making and how many days a week that you're doing this because um, you're telling me it's four to five days a week of four to five hours and I don't know you but right. is that 
a consistent four to five days a week for mm. four to five hours every week for a year? Mm. Uh, no, no. Um, this was a rough year for me. I've lost family members. So during those times, I went through a really rough time mm -hmm. and I couldn't really like, I mentally, I couldn't even do it. Yeah. So I had a couple of months where I was really going through it or whatever, but I'm, I'm getting right back in it. Like I'm not letting that stop me. I'm continuing to go back and, and pull up my list and, and make phone calls and, and all that. Yes. And it, it is hard, but I do agree with what she said. It, it is, um, I definitely need to get more, like not so much time management, but. Discipline. I, but what was it that she said? She said that um, it was. She can't hear you. Oh, she can hear me? Can you hear me? Emma? Yeah, you were like you like This is is my is my is my mic down or something? No. No, I hear you. You just whisper Oh. Oh, I said I said it's discipline. I said motivation doesn't last, discipline does. So I can be motivated yeah. Monday and Tuesday every day of the week. You know, like Monday and Tuesday every week. Mm -hmm. But what happens if what happens in three months? Yeah. You talking about yeah. a year time span, what happens in the ninth month? You ain't still motivated, but you can still be disciplined. So th that's I what I said. That's why I yeah. want to call Cap when you said it. But <laughs> <laughs> the reason the reason I know that couldn't have been true, because that type of work ethic wins. Absolutely. I just right. I knew you wouldn't be having this conversation if you were going four to five days a week, four to five hours making calls. You would not be having it. We you, we will be having a very different conversation. But not everybody has that type of uh, availability, one, or even that work ethic. So for right. you, I'm not even asking you to do four hours a day. I'm saying if you can take an hour and be consistent with that hour every single day, you will see some results. But we'll make call after call after call after call, and that's three days. Then we take the next three months off because those three days didn't work. Mm -hmm. I'd rather you spend an hour every day perfecting the craft, making these calls, consistent work. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. That will change That's your life. Good. Okay. Good That's luck. Good. I can do that. I can do that. Let's go. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Um, I want to like, I, I, I think we like, we, we put a lot of information in this last uh, almost two hours. So I don't even really want to drag it out. Um, but I, I think we got another one. No, thanks, Super Chats. Okay. Oh, we got some Super Chats, man. I saw a couple little Super Chats pull up on yeah, us. <laughs> Not little, but they was big Super. Those are some chunky Super Chats. Let me see it real quick, Nella. All right, y'all. First and foremost, thank you so much for Super Chats. Major, we greatly appreciate your Super so Chat. You came on. Hustles. We didn't even get started, and you dropped the Super Chat. So Let's go. we appreciate yeah. it. Braised by Joya Bean. So this is who sent us the flowers, Dave. Oh, thank so you, Joya Bean. So thank you so much for the flowers. Hey, look, Joya, I ain't going to hold you. Somebody, he came with a bouquet of flowers and said they was for you. And I knew my wife was coming, so I just didn't want to get no, I don't want no problems. <laughs> Um, but thank you. Let me let me see the flowers real quick. Oh, I got some flowers. That's what's up, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Yes, water is real. Yes, water is real. <laughs> Keep it on the laptop. Oh, All thank right. you. We appreciate the flowers as well as the super chat. And then finally, Marsha Ray, she be coming through every single week. Both of these young ladies do. We appreciate your super chat as well. Thank you so much. Y'all, if you are loving this information that has been dropped today by all of these amazing, amazing powerhouses, make sure you go ahead and drop a super chat. It's not going into our pockets. It's not building this, this uh, platform. It is going to help Dave and all his friends go and teach the, inner, the children of the inner city at the schools about entrepreneurship so you are helping his initiative he said it earlier this year 2024 is up and is stuck when it comes to teaching the kids. these kids mm. and Joya right? Bean said I look forward to Fridays on the social proof couch I'm giving you all the flowers now love Joya Bean thank you so that's much that's what's up that's what's up 
shouts out to Marsha Ray Cage for the 20. I feel you, Dave. I feel like I'm missing something in business, but I'm definitely going to figure it out. Yes, you are going to figure it out. Shouts out to everybody that put a C in the ground to support this uh, podcast. That was funny. Joy Bean said, I'm married too, David. It's just an appreciation. I, nah, I appreciate the luck. I just know where it's coming from. You know what I mean? I know where it's coming from. If somebody sent you some flowers to your boo, mm-hmm. unidentified, because I'm just seeing the car, unidentified, you'd be like, what? Oh, yeah. Part, no, no, read the car, bro. No, read the car. Go ahead. <laughs> I know, yeah, but so. No, but I, I, I think it's really important that we identify um, what's missing. And I think we all have these things that are missing in our lives that are unidentified. But when we identify them, that's when it's up. The, I, I think it was cool. Alexia, a few times she said, yo, I eat. I be spending money on food. Yeah. That's some self-awareness. That's my sinful nature. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's self-awareness, right? And we're not running from it. You know, I do this exercise in the morning meetup sometime where I'm like, yo, pull out your bank statement. And look through your bank statement to find the holes where all the money's going. How often you do Dang, that? Dang, pull out what? the bank statement, yo. That's <laughs> at least once a month. Oh. Oh. See? But you know what's crazy? Here's what I know for a fact. There's a hundred people on that call. Some people won't even do it. Because we know there's a problem, but I don't want to look at it. I don't want to face it. That's me. I don't want to go through it and see where my errors are. I ain't checking that statement. <laughs> I can't I'm do going it yet. to challenge you. I ain't ready yet. Today. No. Today. I ain't ready it's yet. It's to pull up your back. All right, just do it real quick. Just look yourself. Just take a little peek at it real quick. And we're going to wait. We're going to wait till you pick up your phone. Go get yeah, open your banks. You don't got to show us, but open your bank statement. Uh, open your go to your my bank. My heart is going to hurt. Hold on. Just, <laughs> Dang, it's going to be the first again, too. Come on, come on, come so on. So you just go to, like, the spending thing and see the categories, basically? No, 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 no. I was going to say, I can do that. Categories are general. I'm saying you want to go through it. One, you'll find a few things. There's some recurring payments. DoorDash is kicking my tail. Oh. Oh, my gosh. I'm talking about to this day. DoorDash and Amazon. And it's all good, though, because, again, my wife might be watching this. Sis is here. And she had a child a, a, a year ago and one a year before that. And she don't feel like cooking all the time. And we do, um, what's it called, Instacart? Mm-hmm. It's cool. All the you don't want to go to the grocery store? You just had a baby a year ago. You're so gracious. You understand? Babe. A year ago. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> we could just go to the grocery store and I think like we'll buy stuff. less stuff because you got to like grab the thing off the shelf and there's a price right there and put it in your car. With Instacart, you just start clicking stuff. That's I think she's just clicking around. Let me get that. Let me get, I'm going to need an extra one of them. It is convenient. It's super convenient. And the card is stored. <laughs> so you don't really have to pull out the card. It's yeah. in I digress, okay? I wasn't trying to go down that path. My point is, you'll start to see some, you'll you'll see the issue if you go through it. And it brings awareness when you're out and about. At least for today, if you check it today and you and Jag had a plan to go out and eat, it might alter a decision. Like, yeah, you know what, boo? I ain't ready yet. I ain't ready to like be accountable. I, I want to eat. I just want to eat. I want to eat. It's the self awareness with me. <laughs> I know. I know. That's but real. one thing about me, like I know me, mm-hmm. and I ain't ready to stop eating. <laughs> Especially like I don't do anything. You see, I kept saying. You kept saying where you spend your money is food. Like I don't be doing nothing else with my money. Like I work hard. All I want to do is eat. Good. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. I just want to go eat at restaurants. I love eating at restaurants. That's and I, I, I think it's cool because you're in a good situation, but there are some people that can't afford not to look at their bank account and find out the problem. All right, yep. I'm gonna do it today. I'm gonna do it right now. But just, just for, just for the people that are here, <laughs> you might be okay. Where like 
you don't have these habits of, I don't know, drinking or smoking or going to the club or spending money at a strip club. You don't have those vices, let's say. Yep. So you can do whatever you want because you're successful and you've accomplished something. But there's somebody watching right now that doesn't have the privilege that Alexia has. You are in a situation. Mm-hmm. And we need to figure this out. You might look at your bank account and realize, yo, every single month, there's more money going out than it is coming in. And then you start looking at the history of statements, the last six statements, and you see the same thing. How many? Just start looking at how many overdrafts hit every single month. At least we can stop that. One of my immediate goal, like when I was working at the Cheesecake Factory, my goal was not to get wealthy. My goal was to not have a negative balance anymore. Mm. How can I not, how can I not go a whole month without having overdraft fees? That was my first objective on this road of becoming successful. It wasn't becoming a multimillionaire. Or your bank statement will show you what you started with and the ending balance. So every single month, the starting balance and the ending balance was different. And I always ended each month with less than I started with or around the same number of zero. This was a real challenge for me, but I just know I'm in a bad situation, but I'm not trying to look at it. But we need to start looking at it. So every now and again, I do jump on the scale just to make sure I ain't, get, I ain't getting too far away. Mm. At, least I'm, at least I'm checking. I don't check my vitals and stuff, but I need to guess. <laughs> I check my blood pressure right now and again. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about financial literacy and entrepreneurship, okay? The stuff I feel comfortable <laughs> talking about. <laughs> so we need to look, okay? So if you are listening right now, just put look in the chat if you're going to just look today. Just just face it. It's not a big, scary monster that's going to eat you alive. No, it's not. <laughs> and it's, So do y'all, do y'all be looking at y'all each other's account and stuff? Not each other's. No? Oh, hold on. Talk to me. Okay. Nobody <laughs> asked you what my problem was. <laughs> <laughs> so very much like Alexia, I am a recovering Starbucks addict. <laughs> okay? And so... End of 2023, I receive a notification from Starbucks, and it is my year end mm. of what I have spent with mm. Starbucks. So wow. they sent me a card with basically like my personality based off the drinks that I've ordered and everything. Aww. They sent me a summary. I, sp- I has visited uh, quite a few Starbucks within 22 cities. Over the year. Wow. And they told me I was in their top 5%. No way. Bro, she get the biggest one. <laughs> Nobody asked you. <laughs> They're going to say it's a tall. Actually, it's a venti. It's a venti. It's a little one. <laughs> See? And if it's iced coffee, then it is. Wow. Did they show you how much you spent? They showed me um, how many points I earned. And based off of how many points I earned, I was able to calculate how much I spent. We're not going to talk about that, though. So yeah, keep going, sis. Keep <laughs> going. Going. Okay. Wow. So because of that, though, I started making my own Starbucks at home. Good. So I have not ordered Starbucks all month long. Really? Good but job. see, the That's thing with that is... It's not really about making it at home. It's like, <laughs> it's like who doesn't want to get out the house, go to Pilates, and go to Starbucks after? Like, who doesn't want to? I can't. It's an I'm experience. About to, it's an experience. It's like, that's what makes me happy. Like, I don't know what it is. Maybe I should start. I bought the little blended thing that you make for the cold foam. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. And I really started doing that. And I'm like, no, nah, I just want to go to Starbucks. So I don't know what it is. Like I got to pray about it, David. So and look, listen, that might not be your pain point. That might not be your, that might not be the thing for you. Yeah, that's right? not a, yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, I got you. So, but for, for Nella, for it Nella, it was something that bothered her. And she, and somebody else might have got that letter and said, oh, I'm top 5%. I'm a real Starbuckser. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Starbuckser. <laughs> But it was something about what she saw that she didn't like that 
made her make a change. So again, it, it's not if you listen. If you drink your Starbucks and you and that's your happy place, wonderful. But there is something that needs to improve in your life that mm -hmm. is triggering for you that you wish it was a different way. We need to find out what that is. Okay, so how often you check your statement? My bank statement. Once a month. I'm I'm on my statement every day. Oh, every day. Like, not, well, not every day, but almost every day. So uh, you are looking for holes every day. Well, because there are. If I go through my statement four months from now, mm -hmm. there's things that happen and I can't recognize them. Exactly. To find out what that is. Right. It's just like charges. So mm -hmm. I make it a habit to log in on a regular basis. All right. I need to start doing that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm taking from the podcast today. Monitor. Checking my bank statement. I can't tell you the last time I checked that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. I'll be checking that thing. I need to check. I need just to look for hosts because you really never know. Like you could have subscriptions going. I think I did mm -hmm. that my the end of my fiscal year, like December, but it wasn't to check for holes. It was like my accountant meeting. Yeah, you know. So I've never I've never done that. But you remember I said that was like if the one mistake I would never make again is frivolously spending money. Yeah. Um, but I, like I said, I don't really do anything with my money. The little subscriptions and stuff those can make a big difference. Oh, so I'm, I'm gonna sure. make it. I'm going to hold y'all accountable, too, because I'm going to do that. I'm going to start checking my account every <laughs> two day, every other day. Yeah. I can't do it. I don't know about every day, Shans. That's every good. other day, <laughs> I'm going to start checking my account. I'm going to give you a report every Saturday. Absolutely. Oh, All right, I like let's that. do it. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, what do you understand? Check my account. Check my account. <laughs> <laughs> I, I check my credit card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I do a lot of credit card. That, yeah. that that's when I look at my statement. Yeah. That's pr predominantly what I'm I just look at the credit card every week. I'm looking okay. at the credit cards every week, like what's spending, what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Like, so what do you look for? Um, so what I did was at the end of the year. Um, so my wife, she has a credit card that only she used, and mm -hmm. so we pulled that just to see what was going on. And just Why like are we trying to look at our money. No, no, no. I'm just <laughs> it's, it's it's our money, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so just like that, it's it's like it's different when you can actually see. Like, when you can see, it gives you a different outlook and a different perspective. So, for us to look at the statement and to see what she spent, she was just like, no way. I'm like, wait, bro. Like, look, here. It's right, it's right here. And she was just like, dang. So, she got quiet for a minute. And then we, like, the conversation changed. And then to her own accord, like, 30 minutes later, she came back and was like, did I really spend that? She's like, no, you know, you know what happened? She started telling me about why she didn't spend all. I said, that's your credit card. You spent that. Mm -hmm. And so she took ownership and was like, dang. Yeah. She's like, I'm, I spent that much. I said, yeah. Yup. So what are, like what I'm trying to get to is when I check my statements, like, what am I looking for? Is no, 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 no. <laughs> here's, here's what's cool about this process. Here's what's cool about this process. Like, you, don't have to, today. you don't have to be looking for anything, but just look and you'll find something. Okay. So, it. like, I look at my, my YouTube analytics, right, and my Facebook analytics, mm -hmm. and it's not like I'm looking for a specific analytic, but I'm just looking at the numbers. And eventually, you're like, oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. So, I found this is really, this is how I came to bring Donnie on as a co-host. I'm just, I don't know what I'm looking at, but I hit the little analytics button on my YouTube and I'm just looking around. I'm like, oh, this is watch time and, you know, like all this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I get down to this one section and it says gender. And it's showing me the gender in which watches my podcast or watches my YouTube channel. And the number said 89% men. I was like, that's interesting. 89% of men watch your podcast. This was this was 2000. See, analytics are so good. Mm -hmm. 19 probably when I'm looking at this, 20. Or when I, the year Donnie came on. I was like, yo. And again, I didn't know what I was looking for. I'm just opening my analytics, just looking around. And I see that 89%, it was like 89.6% men watching my YouTube channel. I said, well, that's interesting. I wonder why that is. And I started thinking, wow, maybe it's because I'm not a sex symbol. Yeah. Women just not feel, all right, chill. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that's so a fact. Like, right, <laughs> that's a fact, though. That's a that's fact. A fact. Um, but I'm like, yo, it's something, uh, 
that I'm not res it's something about our channel that's not resonating with women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I went on a journey of finding a female co-host. I found one and we did it for a little while and it didn't work out. And then we found Donnie. But the only reason Donnie came on is because I was just looking on my analytics and I found something. So if you just pull up your bank account, you will find something. You're like, yo, what's this? I went through, uh, we was on vacation and don't ask me why I was looking at all this stuff on vacation, but I went through the bank account and I, I I had like a whole little sheet of thing. I might still have it. I can show you of like payments of stuff. And I brought it to Dre and she realized there was a couple insurances like life insurance where she tried to have one and then went to another one. But the old one was still charging us for life insurance. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, no, they should have stopped that. It resulted in like five thousand dollars of refund. Mm -hmm. I found something. We're just looking. So that's it. That's um, anyway, man, listen, I, I think yes, just real sir. quick on that. If like so like I was showing Alexis like that. I'm on my Discover app right now, right? And you can see the year in what you spent, but then it also break it down in each category and then you can click each category and then it tell you what you actually spent in each category. Mm. Mm -hmm. So like you can say, okay, well, what did I spend on merchandise? Like what did I spend on supermarkets? What did I spend on restaurants? Like what did I actually go and what did we buy? So for restaurants, So Fresh Meal, we spent $1,027 on So Fresh Meal. That's our meal preps, mm -hmm. right? So we can see uh, Star Starbucks. <laughs> see? Got it. <laughs> Wife, See? this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Don't call this, her. This is Leave almost a thousand dollars in Starbucks. That's not a. That's not a, a lie. It's okay. Thousand dollars. A thousand. Four dollars at a time. Forty years. For, 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 that's for the full year. That's How for much the full is, year. That's for the full year. How much is Starbucks? Like eight nine dollars. Yeah. yeah, eight nine dollars. A thousand dollars for the year. Spent on a drink at Starbucks. Ten dollars, yeah. But then ten dollars, the, and then it gives you the breakdown of the breakdown. Like it shows you every <laughs> single transaction, the day, the time, everything. Don't For look coffee? at that. Just. Right. But now, but now here's the beautiful part. Let me, let me, let me protect the wife. So in that, it also tells you too. It says here's how, here's how much you spent, and then it says. Your cashback rewards earned. We own like three, four thousand dollars for the year on what we spent. So that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, her See? thousand dollars. Her Starbucks paid for. Yeah, so her Starbucks is paid for. Cool. <laughs> you get that. That is so it. good. I get it. That's good. <laughs> I get it. No, something for me that was really bad was um, shooting content mm -hmm. and having to get beauty done for content. Mm. So oh. my accountant would call me like, so the makeup artist I was using, he was charging me like two fifty a day. And I would have to, I would only use him like two or three days out the week. And it was for a house call because I didn't want to go to the, to the, to the salon. He mm -hmm. like, I didn't want to go to the salon. I just prefer a house call. So my accountant was like, what, what is this? Cause I was shooting content. The, the uh, campaign I was doing, I had, I needed content shot like three days a week for like three months. So we talking about three days a week, two fifty a day. And she was like, you need to learn how to do your Dang. own makeup. And at that moment, I learned how to do my own makeup. And whenever I have to do something, I can do my own makeup. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I understand yeah. um, checking the account. Because you won't know. Like, you'll think, oh, it's just 250 you know, or oh, it's just 250 Or I have to do this. Because yeah. essentially, if you have to do something, like, it ain't no, well, I can't. Yeah, like, I got to sure. do it, you know. Yep. So I, I like I like that. So yeah. I'm a, I like that. That's $40,000 a year that she was paying. No, it wasn't for a year. It was only for three months. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we buy we like we buy snacks for the like if you go in there it's like snacks and stuff like that in there, and for some reason like K okay, she'll just order the snacks and water and stuff like that, but then I started noticing that these snacks is getting more and more premium. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yo, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I said K, okay, we we need to slow this down. Okay, we not feeding old hood. Okay, y'all better order some. Listen, man. Um, I think we covered a lot, right? This you get a lot. Amazing. Get a lot. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Good, sure. good. Okay, so action steps when you leave here. Give me some. So good. Give me some action steps when you leave here. Action steps. So I am definitely going to start working on. I'm going to start working on some like developing some digital products mm -hmm. from what I've already uh, created. Um, I've already. I wanted to look into eBooks. Mm -hmm. Um. But I kind of like slowed down on that. So I'm definitely going to get back into that. Yeah. I'm going to look into some things that I can invest in for the future, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, making sure that I check my bank account good, more often. Good, 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 <laughs> um, good. Yeah. Uh, trying to 
just I'm just going to develop a much better business plan because I already mm -hmm. have one together. But I'm going to look over my business plan and modify it heavily yeah. for sure. Good, good, and I'm going to start putting some things that I've been putting off in, in motion now. I love it. I love it. I like cool, too. cool, man. This is good, man. Yo, I'm listen. I'm excited for you. Thank mm -hmm. you. It's a very good conversation, man. I know I'm excited. I'm in, I'm inspired. Uh, uh, there's there's always, when you have these type of conversations, it's like, yo, you get the chance to look at what you got going on and just bring some stuff to your mind. Like, okay, I, I do need to tighten up over here. I do yeah. need to make uh, some adjustments here. So um, we are wrapping up, man. Uh, let's let everybody know how they can uh, work with y'all, how they can connect with you, what you got to offer. Uh, Lexi, what you got? Uh, my name is Alexia Wright. My Instagram is at underscore Alexia Wright. You guys can also find me on YouTube and Facebook at Alexia Wright. Um, right now, I am doing a four-week live mentorship, and I'm also doing a vending machine webinar. So that is what I'm doing right now. You guys go to the link in my bio to check it out. Good stuff. And yeah. I also want to get your book, Zeta. So, so you got some on you? I was going to say, give me, give me five books, yeah, too. Yeah, five books. Yeah, that's right. All right, hold on, bro. We'll just take yours. And you take don't it have anymore. books on you? I need to, I still need to put in more orders to have them on me all the time. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I do do you know if your main focus was selling this book, you'd always have books on you? Mm -hmm. okay. But because it's not your main focus, it's an afterthought. Mm. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so so I definitely saying. need to modify that. Yes. It today. Boots. Like if like it's if it. your main focus was to be like a personal trainer, you'd always have some sort of you'd have clothes in your car or mm. your you know what I mean, you just stay ready because my main focus is this. Yeah. So you just showed us that you don't have a focus right now. And or then, your book isn't your focus. And then every time you're around people like him and us, like because we're high level entrepreneurs, oh, you're you more likely going to make some money. For yeah. sure. So like just you should have probably bought 100 books today. We, right. we probably actually would have just bought them all. Yeah, for sure. To support reason. you. Definitely. Yeah, seriously. That's mm -hmm. a fact. Yeah. No, I would have just to support you. Just yeah. because you are sitting here 50 and 50 easy. Like mm -hmm. We would have split Truly. that. No problem. Yeah. How much yeah. is that? Would have been a... Uh, oh, How much is the book? Hundred it's, bucks, it's twenty dollars now. So she would have wow. made two thousand. Wow! Damn. Oh, that, a light little thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's only oh, take like almost three hundred dollars a day to make six figures a year. So you would have been, in, you would have been really good shape. Room. Yeah. No more it's okay. Still, it's not okay, but yeah. it's gonna be okay. No more missed no opportunities, more right? No DM more. me the link, and I'll I support you still. I got you. Same. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you can DM it to me too. Yeah. Thank love you. it, love it. Coop, talk to me, man. How can people rock with you, support you? Yep, yep. Connect with you. Man, uh, Dion Coopwood again at Instagram and all, well, majority of social media platforms at Mr. Phenomenal Power. Uh, on Facebook is Dion Coopwood. That is the government name. Um, you guys should just follow me. Stay stay tuned in. Stay wrapped in. And uh, one thing I want to tell you guys is, um, and this is a shout out to J.O. He always says is whatever you tune into, you turn into. And whatever entertains mm -hmm. you, trains you. So Say for, that one more time. Yeah, whatever you tune into, you turn into, and whatever entertains you, trains you. So if you are out there, you're trying to figure out how can I get ahead in life? How can I be ultra successful? How can I go from being the person that I am today to the person I want to be tomorrow, that successful individual that actually achieves and obtains success? You got to change your environment. You got to change the things that you're allowed to come into your body so that way the right things can come out of your body. And it's really about the environment. I remember not being successful and not making seven to eight figures a year. And it wasn't until I actually said that I wanted to make it and I changed the environment of the people that I was around that I actually started hitting that. So if you guys are wondering what does it take to really truly be successful, again, whatever you tune into is what you turn into and whatever entertains you, trains you. There it That's is. That's a bar. Um, Big bar. Zeta, come on. Let everybody know how to support you. <laughs> My name and, is and where to find you. My name is Zeta Luby. You can find me on Instagram at Zeta Luby, Z A D A L U B Y. You can also find me on in, uh, Facebook at the same at. Um, and you can find me on TikTok at Zeta Luby underscore Z A D A underscore L. Um, and you can buy my book. It's in my bio. The link is in my bio on my Instagram page. And you can also DM me if you ever need some personal training. Love it. Love it. All right, listen, y'all, thank y'all so much for tuning in, man. Make sure you join the number one community for entrepreneurs. We have these type of conversations every single day, actually. Uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the morning meetup. Go to the morning meetup. 
dot com mm-hmm. and join the community. We have so many hungry entrepreneurs, so much information. We get together on a regular basis, live and in person. Uh, we have different chapters around the country and different groups uh, in your area that you can connect with other entrepreneurs. So go to the morning meetup dot com. Join us. We got a super chat. <laughs> Oh, Hondo. Okay. Who was that? Kalila. Morning Meetup family. Thank you so Morning much. Where you been at? Meetup family. Kalila. She was on this week. Was she? I saw, I saw her on this week. <laughs> Kalila. <laughs> but we Shouts appreciate you, girl. Thank you for all you do for the culture. I heard you were splitting it with us. Was I? Yeah, I heard like your guests you were splitting I could, but then it takes money away from me investing in kids' businesses. So if you want the money. Come on, say less. Oh, we got we got some motion. Oh, it's about to be a war now. And a super chat. Hold on, who that? Who that? Good luck, Kalila. Okay, Quentin with the nine ninety nine. Would you offer a three month payment plan for the five hundred dollar morning meetup? Uh, no. It's five hundred dollars for the year. But would you get the whole year for five hundred? So, huh? I don't know. Hey, so, shop pay. They can break that joint up over four months. You get your whole money up front, mm-hmm. and they break it up over four months. Ain't got nothing to do with you, bro. Set me up. Hold me down. Or Eastern talking. So Quentin, yeah. Stay, Quentin, stay tuned, okay? <laughs> Quint, Quentin, we gonna hold you down, <laughs> bro. Not say this no is what right I now. do. Yeah. <laughs> when it come to banks and financially, that's my. Let me. I, let me help you out, bro. I, got I you. appreciate that. Let's All right, go. say less. Yes. Yeah. My answer is yes. Don't no yes. money get by you, Jay. Let's go. Don't let nobody slip by. Let slip by. <laughs> we'll get that man in the morning meetup. He ain't gonna miss no more meetups in the morning. So you can fi- you can finance it, mm-hmm. and you only got to put up how much? You gonna get your five hundred? They gonna just break it down over four payments. How much do they gotta put down? They gonna put down one twenty five, and then one twenty five, one twenty five, one twenty five. Oh wow! Yes, sir. Come Set on. Me up. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. That's it. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. All right, look, y'all. Make sure y'all. Tap into the morning meetup.com. We'd love to have you in the building. Thank you for everyone that put a super chat uh, into the lives of these kids. Okay, so I'm going school to school and investing in youth entrepreneurs because they are the future. Okay, those are the people that my kids are going to partner with. Those are the kids that might give my kids an, uh, uh, an internship. So I want to pour into um, the next generation. So mm-hmm. if you are supporting that, we appreciate it. And uh, I know that the seed you put in the ground today is going to grow into a beautiful, beautiful tree in your own life. Okay. So we love you all. We will see you next Friday. Let's get it. Mm, so free good. smoke, free smoke, free smoke, free smoke.